A little light comes on, which means uh, this meeting is <coughs> being televised, and I will come to order. We do have our quorum, and I will ask uh, Director Randazzo to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everybody. This is the regular meeting of the United Laguna Woods Mutual Board of Directors, California Nonprofit Mutual Corporation. Today is Tuesday, August 14th, and it's 9.30, and we are in the boardroom. Uh, acknowledging media is uh, the globe here. Yes, she is. Thank you very much. And, of course, we have our wonderful VTV crew upstairs who are filming this. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the agenda? Carl, second by Andre. Are there any additions or corrections, changes to the agenda? Uh, we have one under uh, 11 C number one. That lien has been cured. That uh, matter has been cured, so that lien will not be uh, enacted. Otherwise. Uh, are we using the voting screen, Cheryl? All right, would you all please vote to approve the agenda with the change as amended? Okay. We don't have voting screens, Cheryl. All right, this is just the agenda. Let's please raise your hand if we can approve the agenda. Anybody opposed? Thank you. All right, without objection. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, uh, Agenda item number five, approval of the meeting minutes uh, from uh, <clears throat> July 10th, 2018. And I will begin by saying uh, we did have some Scribner errors that were pointed out to us by uh, Director Randaza uh, in advance. And so uh, it was too late for that to be published, but they will be changed in the uh, minutes that are going to be published. They were not substantial. They were just uh, uh, subscribers, <laughs> double words, things like that. Right. So uh, may I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes? Maggie, second. Don, okay. All right, all those in favor of, oh, is there any discussion on the minutes? Yes, no. All right, all those in favor? I guess we've got our screens now. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. There we go. The meeting, the <coughs> minutes are approved. Uh, report of the chair. Uh, I am so pleased to announce to everybody that we will have nine candidates running for our four seats this fall, which is just wonderful, the participation that we then are getting from our residents. We really appreciate. Uh, we did have 10 but one of the candidates had to drop out because of uh, family illness. Uh, and so uh, we now have nine, but that's really great. And those uh, ballots will be going out towards the end of this month, 26th, I think. And uh, I, they need to be back by the 26th of September. They will be counted 
in this room on the 28th of September, and then we will know who our new board members are. Um, I also wanted to announce that our handyman service is going strong. I always try to get the latest statistics from resident services before our meeting. And as of yesterday, we have 171 signed contracts. We have 46 open work orders at the moment and 208 completed work orders. We are now using a second handyman. So it's just a, pro a project that has taken off and is doing very, very well, I am very pleased to say. All right, we will now go to the open forum, and this is three minutes per speaker. And these are items that are not on the agenda. And you will come up, give us your name and manner number. You will see a screen with a countdown clock on it that tells you what your timing is for those. A uh, speaker can only address the board <coughs> once in this. All right, Cheryl, do we have some speakers? Our first speaker is Chris Collins. Okay. Good morning, Chris Collins, um, 3306Q. I'm, I'm here to represent the foundation of Laguna Woods Village. Alone we can do little, together we can do so much. That's attributed to Helen Keller and that really is a message that reflects the partnership between the Foundation of Lunaguna Woods Village and the Village Social Services staff. For um, over 20 years, the partnership has strived to meet the needs of village residents by providing temporary financial aid to village residents facing financial crisis. The, the help that has been provided are things like paying the electricity bill, caregiver services, doctor costs, dental care, ta uh, taxi vouchers, and grocery cards. Today, we have been able to expand what we are able to offer. Things like um, the purchase of medical alerts, ambulance contracts, distribution of earthquake kits, and transportation to the local food pantry are things that we've now included. To, re to request help from the foundation, a resident only has to go to social and this is located in the rear of this building here in the, the community center on the first floor. Uh, their trained staff can be reached at 949-597-4267, and they can explain how to qualify for such temporary assistance. But I want to tell you that the village social services staff does so much more than just provide a link to the foundation. Um, it's a valuable resource that connects residents with, with various things like, like caregiver <coughs> services, meal delivery, mental health services, dementia care, and adult protective services. The staff and the trained um, psychiatric social workers um, are able to administer comprehensive biopsychological assessments, and then that, that assists them in being able to figure out how to match needs of residents with what they can offer. Uh, there's the friendly visitor program. That's also something that social services does. And that program trains uh, residents to develop compassion and skills necessary to become welcome visitors and <coughs> companions to less active residents. So for more information, you can reach the foundation at, by phone at 949-268-2246 or by email at thefoundation at comline.com. And please visit our website. It's foundationoflagunawoodsvillage.org. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is um, Valerie Link. Hi, I'm, oops, I'm Valerie Link. Um, 863D. I am the president and head coach of the Aquadets, and thanks for letting me speak. Um, let's see. I just wanted to thank you guys. Hi, Brad, and thank you especially for um, letting the Aquadets 
um, do their thing and for helping us get everything done for the show this year. Um, we're really excited about everything that's happening and Laguna Cafe is really excited for being able to be with us this year on Saturday to do a little refreshment thing. They're, they're totally jazzed. Um, the girls are excited about the show. They've been working really, really hard. And you know, the show is one thing, but there's a lot that goes on behind the show. Um, you know, a lot of us uh, have, you know, family members who have died or doggies or kitties who have died like me, um, <laughs> you know, or, you know, that we've had back surgeries, heart surgeries, knee surgeries, hip surgeries, all kinds of really emotional or physical pain. But, you know, we rally together and help each other. And, um, you know, we just put that emotional or physical pain aside and we just really get into the synchro swimming which none of us thought we could ever, ever do. And then we do it, and it's like, oh, my God, we did it. And then the families come, and they go, that's my grandma, or that's my mom. And it's just so incredible to see. And so I think that's why the Aquadets have been around for 54 years. And I think, you know, since the beginning of Laguna Woods, their leisure role. <laughs> and, and that's what's all behind it. So it's pretty exciting to see. And uh, I just want to thank you guys for keeping us around and for helping us so much. Brad, thank you. And as my girls affectionately call the Bee Gees, Brian Gruner and Bruce Gardner, <laughs> you know, thank you to them. And I just wanted to say that today. So thanks very much, you guys. Oh, and the show is, is uh, coming up. It's next week, August 23rd, 4th, and 5th, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So come and be there. And if you guys just tell the girls I'm the big cheese, come in. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Um, Cheryl, our next uh, speaker, please. Okay, our next speaker is Maxine McIntosh. Good morning, United Mutual Board. I'm so happy to be here. I want to thank all of you. I've been attending the budget meetings, and you've been really working hard on that, constantly keeping in mind what benefits United Mutual the most in the long run and the short term. I'm so grateful. I think you've been really really thorough and responsible. And I want to speak specifically about my gratitude for Janie Durrell's Architectural Control and Standards Committee leadership. You know, when I was on United Board on a three-year term, that was all part of MNC. And Donna and I remember that was a lot of work and the MNC meetings sometimes lasted as long as the board meetings are longer. And this board saw a couple of years ago the necessity for separating and keeping a separate uh, committee to one side just for the responsibility of the architectural controls throughout United, the standards we all follow. And they meet right upstairs every month in the Sycamore Room. Everyone's invited to come. But Janie Durrell has done an excellent job in leading that group. And we all benefit from that, believe me. And I would like to, this is my day of attitude for gratitude, especially say, that I'm thankful to Pat English. She has spent years learning and teaching and, and, and voting wisely for United Board. And I understand I'm so happy that she is going to run for GRF. Right now, we, uh, we don't have any United members on GRF. It's not intentional. That's just the way it's happened. And I'm so glad one of our United members will be running for GRF. Uh, we need balance on, on that board. Even though everybody is supposed to think of the whole community when they're making decisions and all, you still fall back on your experiences. And Pat has wonderful experiences here. For GRF? Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. I just talked to Pat this morning. Don has been on uh, United even longer than Pat. And he and I go way back in history. In fact, I think you ran out of time to run and had to quit for a year or two before you could run again. Yes, because you're not allowed to be reelected more than once in consecutive years. So that's terrific. I hope they get elected. I hope, I hope, I hope, just to bring a little more balance to the GRF board. Thank you to all of you. Okay, our next speaker is John Beckett. I'm here to apologize. I got a letter from uh, Jeff Beaumont's office. It says in part, 
Dear Mr. Beckett, the purpose of this letter is to demand that you immediately cease and desist from issuing and distributing false and defamatory communications regarding United, myself, and my firm. Specifically, you state that I have an interest in renewing the GRF Trust, and I have made a, quote, made a fortune fighting over the trust in court, unquote. If you fail to issue a retraction and apology, and if this behavior continues, my office will be forced to take action, which may include pursuing legal remedies against you. This letter is not a veiled threat. It is intended to inform you of what my, form, my firm will be forced to do against you. Please govern yourself accordingly. Very truly yours, Jeffrey A. Beaumont, Esquire. I apologize for any unnecessary shame or embarrassment that I caused by claiming that Jeff Beaumont has a financial interest in extending the trust because he has made a fortune fighting over the trust in court. And if there's anything else I can do to keep United out of court, I'll bend over backwards to do it. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Esther Wright. Good morning. Says I have, oh, hi. I'm representing the Non-Toxic Laguna Woods Project, and some of the people from the Landscape Committee are familiar with what we've been working on. And I want to mention that at the July Landscaping Committee meeting, um, uh, one of the board members mentioned something about a petition uh, to support our goal to have only organic and natural chemicals used to control the weeds and insects in this community. And at that point, we didn't know anything about Bruce Hartley's wonderful recommendation to investigate natural and organic products. We also didn't know anything about the $289 million um, civil suit that you all heard about on the news last week. But what we did is we got busy and we started putting together a petition. And I wanted to make sure that you know what has happened with the petition because as of this morning, we have 976 united signatures of owners in this community who signed this petition. And I'd like to read the petition to you. We have, in fact, made copies of the petitions, and the secretary or someone received them yesterday to make sure that you get copies. We made sure that only owners signed. We made sure that only one owner per resident signed. And we tried to follow as many guidelines as necessary to make sure these are legitimate and credible. So I'd like to read the petition to you quickly. We, the 976 undersigned members of United Laguna Woods Mutual, are committed to the health and wellness of ourselves, our neighbors, our pets, and the VMS staff. We have verified that Laguna Woods Village uses as a weed killer Monsanto's Roundup. Its main ingredient, glyphosate, has been identified by the World Health Organization as toxic and as a potentially carcinogenic pesticide. This product is a danger to all of us in this community. We hereby demand that the use of Monsanto's Roundup be stopped immediately and instead be replaced with organic non-carcinogenic herbicides, insecticides, fungicides, and pesticides. We urge all directors, BMS staff, and Laguna Woods Village citizens to support the replacement of Roundup with safer products that will not endanger our health, our pets, and the environment in which we live. We hereby also request that all current board members and all candidates for the United Laguna Woods Mutual Board and the Third Mutual Board state their position and make a commitment to support this elimination of the use of Roundup and change to the use of non-carcinogenic herbicides, pesticides, etc. Now, we were very, very thrilled with Bruce Hartley's recommendation and the Landscape Committee's approval of that recommendation. However, we're now getting feedback from some of the supporters of this project saying, what do you mean we're going to try this out for 100 days? We have to make sure that the residents, including yourselves and myself, are safe every single day, and we need to ban Roundup now. So my request is that the Landscape Committee and the board relook at this uh, proposal and ban Roundup now. Thank you. Our next speaker is David Cohen. Uh, good morning. I was asked to uh, come out of my doghouse and represent the dogs of Laguna Woods. Uh, I'm the vice president of the dog club, and I'm the uh, 
chairman of the Dog Park Advisory Committee with the City Council. Uh, I want to compliment Mr. Hartley and the Landscape Committee. I read what you're doing. Uh, you're doing a very fine controlled experiment and study, taking one area and testing various agents. I think that's the right way to do it. My background is in discovery uh, in the pharmaceutical industry for over 30 years, and it's, it sounds like a good planned experiment. Uh, dogs and people are affected by this. The dogs develop pruritic lesions. I personally know I spend about $100 a month on one dog for these lesions. It's the Roundup. It's also the surfactants in the Roundup, which veterinarians will tell you cause a lot of the inflammation. That being said, and the fact that a $289 million settlement was just awarded uh, in Southern California alone, there are 4,000 plaintiffs suing Monsanto in a class action suit. In Northern California, there are 2,000 plaintiffs. In New York State, there are 300. Six countries in the European Union have banned it. Seven cities in California have banned it or severely restricted its use. And the uh, International Agency on Cancer, uh, a World Health Organization-sponsored agency, has come out and said it is a cause of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And that's what brings us back to the people side of things and not the dog side, side of things. Uh, it, is a, it is right now accepted as a known carcinogen at least by the world, maybe not by this country, but by the world. So we're dealing with that, and uh, I will leave that up to you. What I find we're not dealing with is the pesticides. We have miticides and pesticides. I went reviewed a list of them, what was being used last year alone. Uh, as a background, and I, I, I've been trained in physiology and biochemistry, and almost every pesticide is a relative of sarin gas. They're called serine esterase inhibitors. They're all neurotoxins, and it's just the level of potency. And what you're doing is you're having people spray in basically hazmat suits around spraying this all over the place. You're wiping out the insect population. I've walked past areas where bees are laying on the ground, butterflies are gone, we hear no more crickets. And last year alone, I personally witnessed and went over and spoke to people spraying the creek near Seville, and two days later, we had no frogs. We're, we're, we're inhaling this, and anybody who says that these things are inactive in two hours is patently wrong. We have recirculating water here, which means that they go into the water system, they may be diluted, but they come back out again, and they enter the food chain. And the wildlife in the village ingest this, and then the wildlife secrete and excrete, and on hot days, those secretions and excretions vaporize, and we inhale it. And something Luna Woods has that is not common in most areas, we have a very high level of neurodegenerative disease in this, in this community. We have, and I work in this area, we have a higher than the normal population of Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, and even dementia. And these pesticides, as I said, are neurotoxins. So I think you're doing an adequate job on Roundup. I think we have to consider the pesticides now and do something about it. You protect your workers, but you're not protecting the people who live in the village. Thank you very much. Our next, our next speaker is Lois Rubin. Hi, I'm Dr. Lois Rubin. I'm here along with my co-chairperson, Esther Wright, to represent a group here called Non-Toxic Laguna Woods. And I'd like to read you this letter. And it's addressed to Brad Hudson, CEO, and Thomas Circle. Uh, these are copies. Uh, president of GRF and Rosemary D. Lorenzo, president of Third Mutual. So this is in regard to the 976 United Petition signatures to eliminate Monsanto's Roundup from Laguna Woods Village. Dear United Mutual President Juanita Skillman, Maggie Blackwell, Committee Chair of the Landscape Committee, Bruce Hartley, he's not here, but the letter is addressed to him also, General Services Director, the United Board members, all of you, and thank you for all of the hard work, everybody's name I mentioned, and also you, Jeffrey Beaumont, Esquire. Dear United, um, folks here. On behalf of the Non-Toxic Laguna Woods Project and the more than 976 United Mutual owners who circulated and signed petitions, by the way, within a two weeks time period, 
We ask you to heed the request and demand of your constituents to immediately ban Roundup usage in the entire United Mutual in Lagoonwood Village. Our residents are deeply concerned about their health and welfare as well as that of their dogs and the health risks associated with the ongoing exposure to all of our residents and our VMS landscape staff. It has been proven that glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup, is carcinogenic. Several Southern California cities have banned Roundup in their schools, public parks, etc. They've been very successful working closely with the guidance of the non-toxic neighborhood professionals. And they have replaced Roundup with non-toxic herbicides, pesticides, and insecticides that actually do the job. With this information, our residents here are quite aware that there are alternatives. We now urge an immediate and proactive approach since there is this recent California court decision regarding a $289 million, $289 million Monsanto award to Mr. Dwayne Johnson, a school gardener who used Roundup unprotected, um, and he now is terminally ill with cancer. And as David mentioned, there are many, many thousand um, cases against Monsanto waiting to be um, activated. Therefore, we urge the United Mutual Board to immediately terminate the use of Monsanto's Roundup in the entire United Mutual within Laguna Wood Village. We thank you for your immediate response to immediately terminate this toxic, toxic chemical. We're breathing it in. Juanita, I noticed you have breathing issues. And as David mentioned, the Roundup is being settled into the groundwater. So we thank you for your taking immediate action on this. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Dick Rader. Dick Rader, 270D. I have a PhD. I also am against Roundup because I can tell you it causes hair loss. <laughs> You're laughing at that, but why are you laughing? Because you could see that there's no causal relationship, right? By the same token, I can't tell you whether Roundup has a causal relationship with dog cancer, urinary cancer, which some people claim. The only way I could tell that is with scientific evidence. And I can understand that maybe Monsanto has a chemical in there that could cause a problem and maybe they're hiding the information like the tobacco companies did. Maybe, but we don't know for sure. And the fact that there's a lawsuit um, that was won recently I'd like to know some things like, as I understand it, the guy, I think, was exposed for two years. And um, uh, I'd like to know whether he was using it protected or not. We don't know that. So I'm going to propose to you a couple of things. One, I think we should find out, and it's, by the way, some people mentioned that it could be vaporized. Yes. If you're spraying, it could be vaporized. But how does it re-vaporize when it's dried on the ground? That I don't understand. So I will propose to you a couple of things. One, I agree that maybe we should test other things. But one other thing the community should know before you go ahead and take alternatives is what the cost is going to be. And that may be significant. So be aware of that. So I will now propose to you scientific way to determine whether Roundup is a problem or not. As I understand it, Roundup is not sprayed uni uniformly throughout the community. I think it's used in certain select areas. I believe that's correct, is it not? Yes, okay, so here's the scientific proof. What you do is you take an area, you spray some Roundup. You take a wad of cotton, which is absorbent, you put it on a, on a pole, you wrap some uh, cheesecloth around it, 
and you make believe that's the dog's paw. And you go along, after it's dried, you go along and camp. Okay? So if any roundup can come up onto that cotton, it's akin to the human or the dog absorbing it. Now, you take a second test. You then, after it's dried, you spray some water on it and wait a little bit. Hope that supposedly will redissolve some of the um, Roundup. Repeat the test. Send that off to a chemical lab, and you will then know whether Roundup is being taken up or can be taken up by um, an animal or a human. It does not revaporize. That's that's incredible. I don't understand that. I mean, if something dries on my kitchen counter, it doesn't revaporize, even if I wet it. Um, the other thing that I would say is you could take dogs if you want and you could take blood samples and again chemistry lab can tell you if there's any of the um, agent roundup in that uh, in the blood sample that's how you prove whether roundup is able to cause a problem in the community and the last point uh, there was another last point oh the last point is you we have no idea if we eliminate Roundup, whether this is going to eliminate the problem. No idea, because there are other chemicals that are being used, and they are spread throughout the entire uh, lawns. So remove Roundup, what are you left with? Maybe you still have agents that could cause a problem. Mr. Rader, your time is up. Okay, well, all I could say is, base it on science. That concludes our speakers. All right. Uh, <clears throat> responses to the open forum speakers. We'll start over here. Carl, do you have any responses? I would just like to say that uh, I uh, understand the issues with regard to the use of certain chemicals, and certain chemicals have been proven in the past to not be good. And in other cases, they've given, they pointed a finger at certain chemicals and turned out that it's not that chemical that's doing the problem, okay? We don't know, and, and Dick pointed out there's scientific explanations here. And we do have a $289 million lawsuit that got won by an individual who sprays it every day for two years or what have you, okay? And he was, uh, he was an individual who actually was in the middle of it. <clears throat> so. I like the idea of the moratorium that we put on it. I think we've specifically had certain areas that are not going to be used by Roundup. Uh, we would then have to canvas the community and say, okay, well, we've decided we're not going to use any of these particular things, but it's going to cost us an additional X amount of dollars, which, you know what, for the safety of the public, we should spend that money if, if it, it's required, okay? But at the same time, everybody is going to probably complain about the fact that we, as a result of that, there is an increase in your assessments because it, but when you don't use that product, you have to do other things. The organics, I understand, only kill the, the leaves, okay, doesn't kill the roots. And as a result of that, they have to get pulled out or what have you, which means there's more work intensive type of uh, thing that needs to get done, okay? So as a result of that, there will be additional costs associated with it. And cost, when it comes to lives, obviously is not a problem. But you people understand that. But there may be others who don't. So under the circumstances, we definitely need to do our due diligence that we're doing right now in order to make sure that we are making the right decisions. Cheryl, would you please put the timer on for the directors as well? And I don't have my screen for <coughs> speakers. <coughs> I'm just going around this way. Raisa, do you have a comment? Yeah. Uh, I think what uh, David uh, Braydock uh, proposed is a scientific uh, measure. We should do that before we make a decision. Thank you. <clears throat> Director Morrison. I am in alignment with Carl and uh, coming from a medical family, very medical family, um, I think that uh, uh, most of us are genetically 
you either are genetically inclined or not inclined to be affected by a lot of the environmental things that are going on. And I can tell you as a child, and I know this is hard for Californians to believe, but being from the East, I used to mow yards, I used to use insecticides, I used to use all kinds of chemicals, I used to follow a fogger on my bicycle. And up to this point in 70 years have not been affected. So, uh, you know, I, I'd have to study it. All right, Jeff, uh, Director Blackwell. Thank you. Uh, I would like for a little extra time, if possible, if I'm not finished. Okay, I'm the chair of the Landscape Committee, and we did vote, the committee did vote to run a trial. This seems the best thing to do. It's only 100 days. On five cul-de-sacs, we will be using on each one a separate organic pesticide with the adjuvants, okay, on those. The rest of the community will be getting the normal service. On those, we will be testing everything, and there will be a small patch in each of those which is normal. So we will have something right next door to check, but each of the five cul-de-sacs will be that, and we will do this for 100 days when we should have some definite results. Um, the difficulty is no one, no one wants to be spraying this stuff. No one wants to be spraying this stuff. Let's face it. No one wants to be praying. This is Roundup, it's glyphosate. But looky, uh-oh. In the meantime, I suggest that for those of you that are not organic, that you stop using high fructose corn syrup, which has absorbed all the glyphosate that they put in the roots of the corn and is very highly toxic. So in the meantime, instead of blaming our <coughs> spraying, which does not happen daily, weekly, or even monthly, I suggest that you also eliminate for many people, this is a huge part of their diet. It's in every taco sauce, it's in everything, you know that. And if you're organic, good for you. It is for the people who are concerned for this health that we are doing this because everyone is concerned for health, okay? Now, we will tell you how much labor is needed to cover this. We'll know in the three months, we'll record everything and then we will come up with the results. If it is so, so obvious that it's not working, like we used one of them that did not work, a different one that did not work, so we won't even be doing that one. But we will follow our procedures very carefully because Bruce knows this is a scientific test that we're doing, at least we're trying to replicate as best we can scientific things. So, so we will be very careful. As to the hazmat suit, you know that people working in food factories and spice factories wear all kinds of coverings and everything because the constant exposure to that is not good for the human. But of course, if you're spraying a herbicide all day or for a couple of hours a day, you should be wearing something like that or the exposure will be too extreme. But we, are pl we have planned the thing, we are purchasing the stuff, we will begin. We will not let you know which cul-de-sac it is, but it may become obvious to you after time, I don't know. Don't mess with it. In the meantime, in your own, I'm speaking fast now. Okay, in the meantime, <coughs> In your own particular garden nearest your cul-de-sac, I mean nearest your manor, if you're using any kind of roundup or anything, please stop for this hundred hundred days. We don't want any interference with the test. So we ask that you not use it. As far as the doggies, the doggies may be sensitive too, but ASPCA says the sap and juices of the pepper tree 
contains, contains substances that have been known to cause skin irritation, pain, swelling, and itching. Your dog may have irritated skin, which can lead to hair loss and infection. If your dog comes in contact with pepper tree sap, wash the animal right away in warm water, and so on. Uh, it also says it is not one of the toxic plants known to be deadly to dogs, but ASPCA recommends you keep your pets away from pepper tree and pepper tree berries to save, stay on the safe side. So please, everyone, regardless of what happens and what we do, be careful with your dogs, be careful with what you eat, and we will run as careful a test as we can. All right, thank you, Director Blackwell. We gave you a little extra time thank because you. you are the chair of that committee, but uh, we do need to move on. <coughs> Director Durrell, do you have any comments to the many different uh, I'm, uh, member uh, comments? <laughs> I'm a member of the Landscape Committee, and I think maybe the testing for the 100 days is uh, one way to go. Um, and I'm in favor of that, and uh, I hope everybody's satisfied with all of the results. Director Tibbetts. Yeah, I have a comment, but it has nothing to do with uh, Monsanto. In fact, I use Roundup, but maybe I'll stop. Uh, <laughs> I would like to comment <clears throat> on uh, John Beckett's uh, apology Apologizing is a difficult thing to do. I apologize to my wife if I've done something wrong. <laughs> you know? And hopefully it's not that often, but it, it happens. And it was hard for John, especially, to come up here on television in front of the whole community and apologize. Very humbling experience. And John, is John still here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you, John, very much. I, I really admire you doing that. <laughs> Director Torn, do you have any comments? Yes, uh, uh, I've met uh, briefly with uh, some of the uh, uh, members of this uh, uh, Roundup uh, uh, team and uh, the, while they are doing the petition collection. And my concern is uh, we have senior citizens live in this area. They are prone to uh, all kinds of uh, possible issues. So that might be a big, bigger concern that uh, uh, maybe in this community we should seriously think about it. Uh, the less possibility of making them sick, the better the community will <clears throat> okay. And uh, also, uh, I know there were studies and trials on that. Uh, last time we talked to the uh, VMS, we were, we, I would ask the question, how many cities, are there any other cities that are doing this? Because cost benefit is always on our mind. Yes, we want to eliminate all the possible issues, but sometimes when the cost is too high, maybe we need to look for alternatives. And I expressed to the team uh, explicitly that uh, this board doesn't have the resource to do all those re researches, and I hope that uh, your group can provide us information. At that time, uh, the uh, VMS told us v uh, Irvine is the only company that does uh, eliminate the Roundup. So I was, uh, I, so I passed on the information, say hey, Irvine is the only one, and then there's not much we can, we don't have the budget of like uh, Irvine. But apparently you mentioned that there are several California cities and there are some other numbers that providing that information. So I'd like to have uh, uh, VMS do some further study and identify, you know, uh, why there are additional cities doing that, what's the cost benefit on that, and how can we work with them. Uh, we don't want to be the bleeding edge of doing all these things. I understand we're doing a lot of uh, uh, research and studies, but uh, that costs money and that takes time to do that, and uh, I'm not sure one case will prove the whole thing. But if there are several cities that's already done those kind of uh, studies, maybe we can better make a better judgment on that. So I'm asking if uh, VMS can spend some time with the group, uh, collect these information, and do some research. Uh, that's, uh, we are bored, we can only add requests, and then depends on the VMS to provide us that kind of information. Uh, the second thing that would be the, uh, 
uh, John Beckett, thank you very much for uh, your uh, uh, apology. And we all have to take responsible of our uh, speech and uh, uh, make sure that our speech is not affecting others. Uh, although we have a freedom of speech in this country, uh, so sometimes there's a fine line there. But thank you very much for your apology. That's my statement. <clears throat> Director English, do you have any comments? Uh, yes, I think um, Carl Randosa, our director, summed it up very nicely. Uh, I think he covered a lot of the points. I'm extremely concerned about this Roundup issue. When I lived in Hawaii, I used to use Roundup all the time because you have to try and stop all the weeds growing there. They grow very fast. We are definitely in a difficult situation. However, we must look at the fact that Monsanto has just lost a huge lawsuit, nearly $300 million. And uh, I don't think that the um, people that sued him uh, it would be, um, I'm, I'm sure they would have some very good basis. So I think we probably have a real concern here and we really need to do something and I'm thankful that our landscape group are <coughs> working on it at least. We need to keep aware of cost. I'm really concerned about cost also. Our health is number one, but the costs are come really close behind it. We don't want to see our fees going up another 20 or $30 because we've got to get some very expensive uh, weed killer and pesticide. Thank you very much. Director Akrakar. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I do have a couple of comments. Let me get to Roundup at the end of the Roundup, okay? But first, I want to thank Chris Collins. She's been working so hard every time to come here, tell us about what she does for our community and now she's even supplying medical alert and earthquake kits to people who need them. And I will repeat that number again. It's 597-4267 to see if you qualify for it. Uh, <clears throat> second, I do have a comment for Maxine McIntosh. Maxine, uh, thank you for thanking people. People do like to understand, to be thanked once in a while. And uh, this is not quite a thankless job because of you and people such as you. <laughs> Sir, I do want to talk about John Beckett for uh, his open apology. That is the way one should treat when you make a mistake and take care of our mistakes. Now let me get back to round up to round it up. <clears throat> Basically, I don't like to shoot from the hip. I would like to study what is involved and I like mm -hmm. what <clears throat> Dick Rader brought uh, as a down and dirty scientific experiment. But, and I want to thank uh, Director Blackwell for uh, <clears throat> getting a program going to understand effect of different um, pesticides and determine. And I, my rough, th I don't know about Roundup much, but the other pesticides can run as high as 16 times the cost of Roundup. I also have one comment for Dick Rader. Maybe Monsanto would like some of the things you mentioned. <laughs> Thank you. Director Armendaris, do you have any comments? Yes, I do. Several. First, I'd like to thank the speakers that uh, made their presentations first, like for John Beckett, I know that was very difficult, and I uh, applaud him for the step he took. I'm sorry he had to take that step, that the attorney had to threaten him. Uh, back to this Monsanto issue. Um, we went through this whole thing with the tobacco industry, and in the end, the truth came out. And I think we have that same situation here with uh, Roundup. Uh, Monsanto is a giant company, and we know they produce a lot of products, GMO and so on, and seeds that uh, can ward off uh, weeds and any other problems that cause growth of it. And it's affected our health. So I'm sure in time it will be proven conclusively that it is a carcinogen and it's so bad that in several countries in Europe it has definitely been banned. Along with this lawsuit that was just one that awarded this individual, $280 million. There are at least 5,000 suits pending right now. 
So in the end, Monsanto is gonna get nailed just like the tobacco companies did. Now about the steps that our landscape committee is taking right now, I think I need to define that. And what they're doing right now, they're doing a test run for 100 days, and they're only spending $1,000 plus whatever labor is involved, but that labor would be involved anyway in spraying. And that really is to determine how effective this other product is so that they don't have to consider doing hand labor to eliminate the weed problem and so on. So I want to thank Esther Wright, Los Rubin, for pointing out the dangers that we face with it as far as our health. I also want to thank Dave, David Cohen because that's another part of the program that needs to be looked at. And right now we're just looking at Roundup. So here's the possibilities that may happen after 100 days. The test runs may determine that this product is not as effective as what they're using right now as Roundup. <clears throat> so at that point in time, it should also tell us whether or not the labor costs have gone up or not. So we should have some numbers to relate this to. So definitely, if all of a sudden it's not determined to be, uh, let's say, feasible or produce the results we want, then we have to come up with new numbers. And I don't want this group here to be discouraged because you may have to start another new round, I mean, uh, you know, another <coughs> effort at getting signatures. Because it may take, let's say, 3,400 signatures, which is a majority, to accomplish what you want to accomplish. So I would love to get rid of it right now, but you have to go through all these steps. Okay? So if we go through the first phase, we don't have success, then we have to go to the next alternative. So that's my view on the subject. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll let Brad, do you have some comments on this? Yeah, I really haven't spoken on this too much and may not be in agreement with everyone here, but I, I have been through these battles many, many times. Um, and I don't think there's, there are good applications for Roundup, uh, the side of freeways, uh, weeds coming up in the middle of asphalt, places like that. I think uh, probably around our kids and pets and manors isn't the best application. And so I think uh, I would opine that way. I would also say many of the problems that we have with our landscaping are particularly turf. Turf management issues deal specifically with Roundup. And I think it was a technique that, that PCM employed to get efficiencies to uh, chemically edge around everything, bring the grass farther away from the manors so you could drive a really giant sized lawnmower really fast through there mulching all the clippings so you don't stop and pick them up uh, and not worrying about hitting anything along the edge of your manor. As you've noticed, over time, the grass has gotten further and further from your house. The, 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 the chemically edged strip gets bigger and bigger and bigger and is actually, in my opinion, incredibly unattractive. Um, not to mention the health risks that, that may be associated with it. I have instructed Bruce, and, and he's working on a plan for that to, to really discontinue that sort of thing, particularly along hard surfaces mm -hmm. where we used to, and most qualified, credible landscape firms use string trimmers to trim the grass along, right along your house there so it looks clean and tight. And so he's evaluating that. There will be some additional cost to that. Uh, personally, I think just taking away Roundup and doing the same turf management techniques that we have historically will obviously be healthier, um, but I don't think it'll make things look any better. I, I, if we're gonna do that, I'd like to take care of both those problems simultaneously. So yeah, I think there's applications for some of that. Um, I don't think right next to your manor is probably the best one, and, and so I support the group in, in that activity. There may be other areas where it makes sense, um, away from people and kids and, and seniors and, and your house, and I think we need to evaluate that. I also would point out, we produce a fairly healthy list of things that we may use. I think if you take that list and then 
say what do we actually use, most of those things aren't on there. So I, I think we need to make that clear to you what we actually use. Just because we, we may use something doesn't mean that, that we're using that particular chemical. And so I, I think uh, we're really down to a, a fairly limited number of things we use. And I want to make sure your group has that information as well so, so we're not, not having a, a debate and, and dialogue about something that we never use uh, and focus on what we do use and what the alternatives are, both in terms of alternative chemicals but also alternative uh, turf and landscape maintenance and management techniques that, that might be able to get you much better results without any chemicals. And so we want to talk about that as well. So that's what I got for you. Thank you. And uh, <clears throat> uh, our attorney has asked for a word here. Thank you, Juanita. I'd just like to um, tell everybody that the comments I've heard um, are legitimate comments. And with the nature of the litigation out there involving Roundup and the settlements and now the recent $389 million judgment, that a jury rendered um, makes this a real issue. And it's an issue that a volunteer board of directors has to consider. They're just volunteers. They're just like you, members of the community. And each, each of your directors up here has a very, very unique um, and uh, very valuable background that they bring to the table um, to help make this community as special as it is. Um, but none of them are experts at this issue or any issue because when they sit up here, they're deemed under the law just volunteers. And Director Rendazzo um, said it first and then other directors concurred that they're obligated to engage in due diligence and rely on experts. And this is an area that, that more than any other really has to take place that they have to investigate this issue rely on experts to bring information to the table for each of them to make informed decisions on this issue. Not one of them can make a decision on this just based on their background. This is a very, very highly technical issue based on um, science, but based on also um, other factors. Um, and rest assured that as long as I'm involved, because this is a new issue for me, I didn't know that Roundup was uh, being used in the community. And even if it is, doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. it just depends on the application and, and what impact it's having on the community. But it, it, it's something that needs to be investigated and action has to be taken. What that action is, I don't know, but the law just requires action to be taken based on advice of experts and hopefully that'll happen. And then lastly, I'd just like to thank Mr. Beckett. I have respect for what you've done and I appreciate that. We don't see eye to eye all the time, but um, that doesn't matter, it doesn't reflect on how I feel about you or any other's um, debate, dialogue, um, controversy is sometimes good in a community. And it's just a matter of how that all takes place. And I appreciate what you did. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to end with one last comment. Uh, <clears throat> Director Blackwell has said this on TV in her report, and it did come out in our landscape meeting. But for the rest of you out there in the television audience who may not have heard Glyphosate. 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 Glyphosate is not the ingredient in Agent Orange. No. We are a wonderful community of rumors, and those go around, and I've heard them from many different people. We're spraying Agent Orange. We are not. They are totally different. And you can go online and check the ingredients in both and all. But please, uh, we wouldn't do that. We are not doing it. So don't keep that rumor going. All right, uh, we will go to uh, <coughs> agenda item number nine. And we would ask Director Stone from VMS to come up and give us a VMS report. Um, Mary, if, if you would like to pause for just a minute, all of yes. those that are leaving, please do so quietly. Yes. <clears throat> Too bad they don't want to sit and listen to who VMS is. <laughs> right, right. And what we do, but that's okay. Well, that's oh, one of here. the sad things that oh, we have is some. people come and they expect us to listen to them, but they don't want to listen to us. Yeah. So. Well, All what right. can I say? You know. 
<laughs> we do the best we can. Yeah. Director Stone, it's your floor. All righty. Uh, next slide. Uh, good morning. Uh, as I said, I'd like to talk about what VMS is and what we do. VMS Services, Inc., Village Management Services, Inc., uh, was incorporated in October 2015. It is a self-owned nonprofit mutual benefit corporation. It was established to provide management services under contracts to the mutuals and the Golden Ring Foundation. The reason behind VMS was to have a direct relationship with staff and not be controlled by a profit-driven out-of-state corporation, Associa BCM. VMS has only three members, United Mutual, Third Mutual, and GRF. Each membership is represented by and through its board of 11 directors. Each membership appoints three directors to the VMS board. Laguna Woods Village utilizes a cooperative model of self-governance with our own separate professional management company, VMS. Seal Beach and Rossmore Walnut Creek use a self-management model where GRF provides management through their own mutual operations division. Next slide, please. Laguna Woods, util, uh, the effective operation of Laguna Woods Village requires that VMS board of directors and the boards of, e and boards of directors for each mutual and GRF establish policies, goals, and objectives and allow management and staff to carry out those directives. Boards do board work and management does management work. Board members do not act alone. It is important for the boards to develop a long-term vision, identify priorities, and provide direction to staff regarding priorities for future budgets. During the transition, the four boards attended training sessions that clearly defined the line between board governance and management and assigned coordination of interaction between the boards and VMS to a CEO general manager. Representatives from each board interviewed candidates and selected Brad Hudson for this position. Brad is the head of VMS. Then comes Chief Operating Officer Siobhan Foster. Siobhan performs work as required to implement board policies and directives and has regular interaction with board members, on-site administrative staff, residents, volunteers, and the public. She is the go-to person for information and problem solving. How often have you heard Brad say, have you got that, Siobhan? <laughs> I think we all have heard that. Where's Siobhan? Right, Siobhan? She yep, 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 yep. We've all heard that one. Uh, as you can see from this organization chart, we have eight divisions. Financial services, human resources, broadband inter information services, resident services, security services, general services, recreation services, and maintenance and construction. Each of these divisions is headed by a person with senior level municipal or CID management experience. They are top performers in their field and are known for innovation and successfully managing people and budgets. The VMS board gets division updates from these individuals at their regular VMS board meetings. These updates give us a way to evaluate staff performance and ask questions. And as I've said before, United Directors are invited to join us. At the July 18th VMS meeting, Betty Parker presented her division roster and productivity statistics. 19 people in financial services handle accounting, which includes accounts receivables and accounts payable, budgets, insurance, and risk management, audits, taxes, banking, investments, and compensation. Betty mentioned specific strategies that finance is implementing for the strategic plan and reported that the combined budget 
for 2019 uh, will be about $98.7 million. United's share is 41.5 million, that's 42%. Third's share is 33.2 million, 34%. GRF's share is 24 million, 24%. About 37.3 3, million will cover employee compensation and 14.3 million more will be needed for expenses related to compensation. The business plan assumes 14 new staff positions will be added for service improvements. Major mutual components will be moved to reserves. Mutual dry rot and wasteline remediation programs will be prioritized. Assessment increases are well below consumer price index and 16.2 million non-assessment revenue is expected to offset costs. <coughs> At the July 18th meeting, Carrie Weldon provided additional HR information as we requested. She noted that there are 57 full and part-time positions. So heads up residents, we have part-time jobs for you. We need bus drivers, gate ambassadors, and recreation leaders. And if you know anyone looking for a job, tell them to check our website. And don't forget, we have a resident referral program. Carrie also reported on ratings from exit interviews and reasons for separation. 52 of the 253 employees who left this year gave retirement as their reason. We did not get high marks for wages and benefits. Kudos to Carrie. It's a tough job market, but between June 1st and July 18th, HR filled 36 positions. That brought year-to-date new hires to 142. At the August 1st VMS meeting, Bruce Hartley gave his update for general services and reported that staffing and the turnover of key staff in landscaping are the biggest challenges his department faces. General services is beyond busy. They have custodial services, landscape, mail and copy service, purchasing and contract administration, sidewalks and streets, transportation and buses, vehicle maintenance and warehouse. General Services is working hard, making many improvements and upgrades to increase efficiency and save costs. For example, custodial services is replacing brooms and wet mops with new efficient sweepers and scrubbers for faster and better results. General Services in, is in the process of a wide-scale project to upgrade signage in the village. This includes stop signs, directional signs, exit signs, no-turn signs, no-parking signs, and facility signs such as clubhouses and garden center signs, which now include an address for emergency responders. The new signs are being installed in concert with industry management practices using TELSPAR system posts. Gate four and other gates that are not open 24 hours are getting new readable and highly reflective signs. New nine passenger buses are replacing the big buses and the new Ride Now program is almost ready. Hand, sign hand sanitizers have been added to the buses for you know, the convenience of our residents. Warehouse handles disposal, disposal of obsolete equipment and tries to inform residents when items are available. Resident disposal of obsolete items is a growing problem for general services. The city has a program for bulky item pickups on the third Saturday of each month, but residents are continuing to leave items in the trash area. To keep our community clean, General Services is having to pick up items daily. This is costing the members more than $100,000 a year. To have bulky items picked up directly from your home, free of charge, contact Resident Services, 949-597-4600 or email residentservices at vmsinc.org. 
up to two pickups per year, up to five, five items per visit. Help us save money for you. Next meeting of the VMS board is tomorrow. Tim Moy will talk to us about security and community access. And that's my report. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Director Stone. <clears throat> Director Trong, you have a question? Yes, would you please show me that uh, sign of the new hires and the vacancies? Some numbers are a little bit concerned. That was number nine. There you go. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So we have uh, 142 new hires year to date and 57 vacancies. Together we have 199, 200 uh, new hires and vacancies. So I consider that's a turnover. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong. Has the board or director done anything? This, this is almost 20%. If we have 1,000 employees, this is almost 20% turnover. That's way high in any industry. Do we have any plan and reduce that kind of a, uh, turnover rate? That's very costly in, in any kind of business. Well, if, if you notice, we had a lot of retirements, 53. Were we, uh, 53, 52 were, were people who were retired. So, yes, I understand that. So That's planned. We that have should to, be planned. You know, people, have, people are getting old. They can't do the job, so they are leaving, and we will replace them with, with new employees. That should be planned, right? You should, we should know that way ahead of time, or uh, something like that is going to happen. So I'm just, I'm just asking, you know, do we have any plan to reduce that kind of a situation? I understand there are various reasons. Right, I'm going to let, I'm going to let uh, our CEO handle that one for me. Yeah, it is an interesting workforce we have here. 44% of our workforce is over the age of 65. Wow. Um, <laughs> big, big numbers of, of seniors. Our oldest employee was, was born in 1931. And so... We have a, an aged workforce. Uh, many of them uh, are choosing to, to retire now. And a lot of it comes about things like uh, uh, dwelling life, where you have a workforce that's been working for years, but they don't want to use that new technology. And so much of your turnover comes with, with gate ambassadors. Same with custodial. You saw that piece of equipment. I, I'm pleased that I directed Bruce to buy some of that because I watched a lady whose only job was to start at one end of the main ballroom in Clubhouse 5 and mop to the other end. And when she get to the back, done, go back and do it again. Uh, you know, damn near a week to mop something. Here, this does it an hour or two. And so we're adding many pieces of equipment like that. Well, guess what? that person who handled that mop isn't comfortable using this piece of equipment. And so uh, we see a lot of employees like that who are either re repurposed within the organization or are che choosing to leave. This is a different kind of a place now. It's very high tech. Uh, it's very efficient. Um, so I don't worry about having 50 vacancies. Uh, you know, I, I, I think perhaps at times you need to run a little lean to see if you can get by doing it that way. And while there are struggles in some places, and I would say landscaping would be one, um, there are other places, and, and custodian will be one of those, custodial services, where because we've been able to add technology like this, running a few people light isn't a big deal um, because we're able to cover it. And, and we're going to add a lot more technology like that as well. And by the way, we're going to bring similar technology to our landscaping services as well, which is done in a very sort of... Uh, primitive, poor turf management way right now. So we're going we're gonna to up the game in every way, and it takes a certain kind of employee to do that, and that isn't necessarily the kind of employees that PCM typically recruited here. And so I, I would suspect that our workforce is going to be smaller in the future and probably more highly paid um, because of the kind of skills that we're requiring that they have. So it's gonna, we're moving in a different direction. Um, that's the... the uh, really the call for the day is to, is to become smaller, leaner, more efficient, uh, and rely at times on contract services where appropriate, and that's what we've done. Okay. Director Akrakar, you had a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
just a, for my own sake, uh, you said non-assessment revenues right. are collected. I was wondering who handles towers and if the tower services are done by VMS for a cost. No, PCM does that. Oh, PCM, totally. We have nothing to do with them. Well, no, no, that's not correct. We, <laughs> go ahead, Tom, you can Yeah, <laughs> we handle their landscape services. Yeah. That's done through a contract. Uh, and then, obviously, they're a member of GRF, so obviously all the amenities, security, streets, they utilize those services as well. Uh, what really we don't provide is sort of the in-the-building services that their residents require, and that's done uh, still by PCM and, and really the same on-site team that's been there for a while. So how much of the funds do we collect from them for our services for that are not? Well, the, well I mean, they pay the, the typical they GRF the GR assessment, app. which is right. a couple hundred bucks uh, uh, per man or per month, and then... Uh, I want to say it's maybe a hundred to one hundred and ten thousand dollars a year for the landscape services. They have a, a fairly uh, minimal landscaping over there, a little bit of grass and some shrub beds. All right, thank you, uh, Mary. We appreciate your report, and we'll uh, see you tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes, uh, we go to agenda item number ten, which is uh, our CEO report. You're up again. Well, thank you uh, very much, uh, uh, Madam President, uh, members of the board, members of the United Community. It's always a pleasure uh, to be here and share uh, some of the wonderful things that are happening uh, out there. Well, Mary's kind of raised the bar in these reports. I might have to step up now. I'm, I'm feeling a little bit ashamed by the quality there. Very nice. Very nice. Um, I know uh, uh, other board members do a good job as well. I want to chat a little bit about you know air quality and the fires that are going on. We've, we've seen a bit of that. The fires are still burning, though they're certainly uh, in much better control and containment than they were a few days ago. And I just would advise residents to monitor that pretty carefully. You can go to the South Coast Air Quality Management District website and, and get an update on air quality in our area. But I think uh, generally a visual inspection will do. It's clearly not as bad. Uh, right now, as it's been in the last few days, but I would just advise residents, if, you, if you're in doubt, if you're having some distress, please stay indoors and, and avoid very strenuous physical activity outside when the air quality uh, is poor. Um, we will, of course, uh, if things heat up again uh, later this summer, we'll, we'll add our some more uh, Beat the Heat movies. Uh, those were very popular. We've done it, uh, uh, oh, I think four days now when it's gone really above, say, 95, or uh, maybe we had some Edison outages that we wanted to you know, make sure residents could go someplace and cool off. So we'll continue to monitor that. I know sometimes we don't know well in advance you know, what the weather's going to be or if Edison's going to have an outage. So you might, you might get notified uh, um, you know, a day before or so that, hey, it's going to be pretty hot tomorrow or Edison has some outages and please come to the movies. I did want to thank members of this board and, and your advisors uh, and the community uh, for their participation in the annual budgetary process, which is uh, a quite a grueling uh, marathon of an effort that we're, we're hitting about the 20th mile right now. I'm hoping we're going <laughs> to finish it up at the next meeting. Um, but I think we've had some good dialogue. Uh, you've got some great enhancements to many programs that we've been focused on, um, such as epoxy, line, epoxy uh, waste lining and, and other programs. And so we're, we're very happy with the way that budget's shaping up. With respect to your regular programs, I think they're, they're moving ahead a, a, a pace. And I think uh, we'll, we'll likely uh, uh, utilize the majority of the resources you've allocated for those. Um, a couple of things that we're just kicking in right now are, are some more of the, and I don't want to take too much of Dawn's thunder here, but some of the water supply piece of your epoxy program, which doesn't get, you know, too much notoriety, and you don't spend quite as much on it, but it's all a very important part of, of our prevention uh, program as well. Uh, I know we just finished a, a study up on uh, walkway lighting, and I hear from a lot of your residents about lighting and how we would maybe upgrade some of those lights and, and add some new ones. I think we're, we're poised to, to really go down that road. And then we do have some, some security fencing going in. I'd say along Molten, but that's not exactly accurate. But uh, uh, certainly on the, the west edge of the community there, which will uh, secure an area that's been uh, a long concern. Um, 
I wanted to talk about gatehouses a bit. Uh, you know, we did two and three last year for a full remodel. They're working on gatehouse four now. And very shortly, uh, we're in um, plan check with the city right now. We'll be installing the gate arm technology uh, throughout the entire uh, community. And so that will start in earnest. I mean, we're the planning's being done. The gatehouses are being remodeled. Now we just need the final plans for the Really, it's about conduit and the underground work to serve uh, those gatehouses and the gate arms and all the cameras that will be installed. There's something like nine cameras at every gatehouse. And so it's a, it's a big piece of technology, provides a lot of security, a lot of data. Um, we, can, we can track down uh, a lot of things using that technology and, and, and use some analytics too to, to look at uh, various compliance issues and also trends as well. So we're very excited about getting that done and you can expect construction on that shortly. Um, we did put a, a new gate at the entrance of gate six uh, and I know a lot of your residents were inconvenienced last week and, and I, I apologize for that. We had a huge, huge problem. Uh, they tried to repurpose that old gate there when they did the new gatehouse and it, it took like three gate ambassadors to open and close the gate. And so we decided before we got a workman's comp claim out of that, we would put one that, uh, that any gate ambassador could open on their own. And so we've done that, and, and that's a, a nice upgrade as well. You may have noticed a lot of work going on at Clubhouse 4. I know many United residents go to Clubhouse 4 for emeritus classes, swimming classes, other things. And this is the break. Uh, in emeritus and so we're doing everything right now. So if you go over there, you'll see uh, the air conditioning, new air conditioning in the wood shop is complete. Uh, they're just finishing up the new roof and kilns there uh, for our potters. Uh, uh, and so we're very, very excited about that. That's a, an important project and many other things as well. So uh, bear with us, we'll be done there shortly. Many of your residents may have noticed that we tented uh, the Performing Arts Center. Uh, the first time in its almost 50 year history that's actually been treated for termites, it was a pretty big tent, I must say. Um, and so that's been completed and we're ready to begin some of the maintenance projects that uh, the GRF board has approved for, for 19 and we'll be giving you some schedules uh, on that. Um, we also, and this isn't exactly related to United, but I think I probably should share, um, we're going to be doing some paving at these RV lots. And so um, when that happens, you may see RVs throughout the community. So I just, if you see a bunch of RVs maybe uh, on a main road or something, I don't want you to think we're having a rally or something. Um, we're not having an RV rally. We're just repaving the parking lot. And, and it usually takes us a couple days to get them out, repave, and get them back in. So uh, likewise, we're we're adding a gate, uh, a new electronic gate on uh, the RV lot at, uh, at, at uh, RV lot B. So I want you to be aware, aware of that. You also may have seen a lot of landscapers around the perimeter of the community, maybe over on, on Ridge Route. Uh, we're doing a, a large security and sort of fuel modification program there where we're, we're taking a lot of that landscaping, very heavy, dense, uh, brush and, and trees right behind the commercial area there on Ridge Route. It's proven to be kind of an attractive nuisance uh, for for uh, the homeless and just ne'er-do-wells generally who like to uh, have hidey places where they can engage in their sort of uh, sometimes illegal and unsavory activities. And so we're clearing that out to make that much more visible. We're adding shepherd's crooks in there as well. The fencing is very low there. It's very easy to, to step on about a three foot uh, block wall and then go over a couple of feet of, uh, of barbed wire. So we'll be taking that up to seven feet with shepherd's crooks. And I know a lot of the, the third and United residents in the gate uh, five, six area are sometimes affected by folks who try to maybe climb over and uh, do a little laundry or, or hang out uh, in a rec room or something. And so, uh, we're going to try to try to discourage that even more more fully than we currently do. Um, I know there's uh, talk about bulky items already today, but I, I can't emphasize enough. Um, waste management is required to pick this stuff up as part of their franchise with the city at no cost to our residents. We should let them do that. When you put that material out by the dumpster, 
than it costs our residents. We're doing waste management's job for them. And so let's not do that. Uh, you're paying uh, a fair price for, for refuse services. Um, you should get all the services that come under that franchise agreement. And that includes picking up bulky items from your manor. And so if you have bulky items, please, please, please don't put them by the trash can. Call resident services and we'll send somebody to pick them up. They usually do those pickups on Wednesday. Um, I think they used to do more days, but now that we're picking up so much, they've cut back their service, which is the opposite of what should happen. We should be utilizing the waste management <laughs> services and cutting back our services, which really shouldn't even be required. So I, I beg you to help with that. I did want to point out that um, you probably saw the construction going on downstairs here, manor alterations, uh, is moving out of resident services and over into what used to be the spruce room. Um, those things don't really fit together all that well. Manor alterations, encounters, appointments are rather long, and so we're creating a space where you can sit down, lay the plans out, take your time, and not feel the pressure of having five people behind you trying to get to that counter. So we think it's going to be a much better service, and we're going to offer appointment services as well. So uh, I think it's a better way to go. Oftentimes, you know, residents bringing a contractor or an architect with them, they don't need to be waiting in line for an hour, uh, you know, with the with the clock ticking, uh, 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 and so we're going to offer appointments uh, to make that much more efficient for employees or and staff and and uh, excuse me, contractors, staff, and residents to to get their business done quickly and and move on. So I, I look forward to offering that. It's not far off. You may have noticed the dog parks under construction. Um, I wanted to thank uh, uh, the corporate members, United and and Third Board, their their support uh, of, of allowing. Uh, GRF to to have some uh, uh, the dog park on that easement adjacent to the golf course I think was a big plus for the community and then pulling that dog park away from from some of the residential units who were impacted by it I think that's a good thing for the community and I, I do thank all of you for your help with that and then I did want to let you know that uh, we're in the process of securing some sponsorships and some uh, grant funding that will allow us to uh, increase our social services staff by up to two new social workers, and so at no cost to the village. So we're kind of excited about that. Um, obviously, uh, you know our population of residents here has a variety of issues that require uh, intervention uh, at that level, and I think the more folks we have doing that, and particularly if if they'll be funded through. Uh, state or federal uh, funds or, or through sponsorship from local businesses that, that that's a good way to do that. And so I, I look forward to reporting on that further. And then lastly, I, I would get in trouble if I didn't at least pitch one event. I Actually, I got two here I kind of like. So one is this is a tribute to Jimmy Buffett. Now, who wouldn't like that? A nice trend. That is at the Performing Arts Center, September 1st at 7 o'clock. And so uh, I encourage you, tribute to Jimmy Buffett. That's a good one. And this is my favorite, though it doesn't have a lot of seats left. This is the Pour and Paint Night. This has got to be the best event that we offer. If they allowed outsiders to go, I would get a ticket myself. I'll just read the description. Come for an evening of painting, wine, and fun. Painting and wine, that sounds like fun. Meet new people and create a masterpiece. Uh, uh, the, the artist for the evening will be Penny Rubin and her Salmon Sky photo. And the fee of $28 per person includes all art supplies and two glasses of wine. Aprons provided <laughs> and probably needed. So that is... Uh, at the Clubhouse One Art Gallery, Monday, September 17th. So here's that one. I don't know if they zoom in on that. But a uh, couple of very interesting and somewhat eclectic events for our residents. And I certainly invite you to participate in, in all our recreation uh, division activities. And we do send out, uh, I think it's a weekly or every other week, e-blast to let you know about the, the various uh, activities that our recreation department is offering. So with that, that would conclude my comments. Thank you. There is also a monthly uh, recreation department uh, calendar that comes out, just like <clears throat> we have for some of the other things. So, 
All right. Uh, All right, uh, Mr. Tong. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, listen to all the uh, major accomplishments from VMS. We know VMS is working very hard and trying to accomplish and uh, satisfy our residents' requests. Um, in our management agreement, there is a statement that says uh, uh, that the VMS will provide us a list of member requests and how they are solved. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's, uh, uh, it's, we've been waiting there for three years, almost three years, and we haven't seen that yet. And I wonder if there's any plan for that. And we've got various promises in the past that yes, we need to do that, we, yes, we will provide that. But still, we haven't received that member request report. Uh, so I would like to know, you know, when will we receive that? The second thing is, uh, recently we received uh, uh, um, Attaboy, you know, uh, kudos about one of the directors providing us information of how much improvement they ha uh, the department has made, a 42% improvement. That's a really fantastic improvement. Uh, so my question is, uh, uh, is it possible that we see all the improvements of all the departments and uh, what kind of a trend they are heading to? If they are doing great, we should really announce them during this meeting and make sure that they get the credit they deserve, they work so hard and improve our resident services. And if there are any trend that's heading downwards, then we, we can look at it and say, you know, what we can, the board can help out and make the resident service, make them response time, make them the completion time better. Okay, so that's uh, uh, the second issue that I'm, I'm looking at this point. And also, we talk about the social issues. Uh, we've been, I think we've been looking for interpreters for immigrants for uh, almost half a year now, and there's no response on that, no uh, conclusion on that. Uh, recent, I've, I've experienced quite a few cases of immigrants because they are not fluent in English, so they are arguing with VMS staff, and the VMS staff got very frustrated, and they're coming back and forth, back and forth, and uh, when I pick up the phone, when they would, uh, one day I was there, and I pick up uh, a phone, and I talk to uh, staff, and problem solved in five minutes. It's really important that we have some kind of, uh, I understand that we have a limited budget, but if we outsource this to the clubs, it's their club members, maybe we can solve the problem easily. And that's what we are looking for at this point and talk to quite a few clubs. They are more than happy to help out and uh, 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 provide service to their members. So there are uh, a lot of uh, 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 members that are not happy and the staffs are not happy because the uh, language skill, which I understand it completely. I was one of them when I first came to the United States, but I'm, I'm better now. So there's uh, what we can do to help out, make VMS uh, work easier and make residents' life better. So that's the third question I have. Thank you very much. Yeah, we have, uh, have a boatload of metrics on virtually any issue. Now, I don't know if, if the board wants Every request a resident has made, there we get about 1.2 million or so calls a year for service from residents. That would be a pretty lengthy um, record list. Um, I think probably 50,000 of those would be for a specific service, i.e. not a security call or not uh, gate access, we get 360,000 calls a year for gate access. So, I mean, there, it's, a, it's a mixed bag. Um, but yeah, I think we have metrics. Uh, certainly our phone metrics are wonderful. I received a complaint from a resident the other day, and uh, I was able to find, she actually was a board member too, and I was actually able to pull up her recorded phone message from two months ago, uh, and then completely know how long it took, how long did she wait on hold before she was answered? How long did it take to actually send somebody to her manor to take care of that and the actual recording of the conversation? And the various automatic emails that we sent back and forth to her, letting her know when those services were gonna occur and, and thanking her uh, for asking for the service. So yeah, that whole process has been totally re reorganized and, and I suspect that we'll want to reform that particular language within the management agreement. It makes no sense to have anything like that. <laughs> I think as an accommodation, what we've kind of ended up doing is if there's a complaint 
that isn't resolved through the normal system, i.e. it gets to Catherine or myself or Siobhan or something, then those are the ones that we, we catalog and, and, and have available for review. Um, but we can generate reports of all different kinds if there's a particular uh, service uh, that's a, of interest to the board. You know, you know maybe uh, I think the handyman's probably a, a pretty good example of how services will work and then they're kind of working that way now where you have a completely paperless work center um, other than the actual application itself. There's no paperwork order. There's no paper at all associated with that. Uh, the, the dispatching of the, uh, of the handyman is all automated. Uh, the resident's acceptance of the work is automated. It's completely automated, and all the data and stats are automatically going to on base for for um, uh, inclusion in our service archives. Whereas on the other many of the other work centers, it's a piece of paper that travels around, and and at some point it enters a data processing room where they scan it into the into the on base uh, system. So, uh, but many of those work centers are transitioning to that uh, paperless format. Uh, likewise, um, I think, and, and we haven't got this 100% worked out, but, but it's probably 90% there, is our right now software and, and the analytics that are available on that, including uh, a recordation of any phone calls that come in, uh, uh, when people called, when somebody was dispatched to, to take them, you know, all that analytics are, are right there and very, very strong. Actually, We've added analytics in every cost center, really, that were never here before. Um, I mean, go to something like paving, where it was just really kind of happenstance for decades, and now you've got a, a, a pretty smooth operation there that has a lot of strong analytics. Unfortunately, those kind of, those kind of requests aren't as rapid as, say, a gate access call. You know, if you want a new driveway, um, that probably has to go on a list somewhere, and you know, months down the road, you you might get that. And then, lastly, on the on, we've added a lot of language enhancements, including Google Earbuds that our staff has down here that will automatically translate language. And then we do have some translators on call that we recruited for that that could be available. Uh, I'm thinking of them more for your more complex interactions, like a manner alterations, or maybe for a a compliance hearing or something where we have a lot of technical uh, information that has to be shared that, that they would be available for that. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we have multiple language options on our website as well. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Director Blackwell. Uh, thank you. In the blue book, in the blue book, it says officers may provide reports on their latest activities. This part of the meeting is usually limited to a report without discussion. Now, it's very interesting to sit and chat with Brad like this. N one director request is not a thou shalt do order for Brad. That would have to be voted on by the board. Yet, we have had four requests right here from one director, and we've heard Brad's response, which is very interesting and in what we would do. We have not ordered him to give us all member comments. We did not vote on that or agree. And so if we continue to have so many questions or comments from a board member, they are not directive. If he wishes to make a, a, a motion that we should receive all member comments, Certainly, we would have a question of why do we need all member comments? What we would do with this if we had it? Uh, I think, or you could talk to Brad afterwards, or you could talk to us afterwards and say, do we need this or we need this because? That would be very valuable. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, Director Tibbetts. Yes, I hope my question would pertain to all the directors. Yesterday afternoon, I was entering gate five, and I noticed that we have an arm uh, on the right. Far right. The right, uh, uh, the right what? What's the? Far right one. The far right lane <clears throat> was missing. 
But was there an accident there? Did someone go through it? Well, <laughs> it's a kind of a common occurrence. Um, oh, it they, is? Oh, yeah. They get hit quite a bit, and uh, they're pretty good at putting them back on. Um, they, they do. We did get kind of a breakaway gate arm so that so we can put them on rather easily. But on occasion, they'll get hit a little too hard and require a little additional work. I don't know the specifics on this one, but it's not an uncommon occurrence that they get knocked off and we put them back on. Well, we don't. That was the first one I've heard of. Yeah. We had, uh, and it was only funny because no one got hurt, um, but somebody came through uh, on a bike and the ambassador opened the gate and, and uh, this person was just going really, really slow and it, it hit him on top of the head. <laughs> they were wearing the helmet, but it knocked the game arm, gate arm off. You know, and there's, you know, the rider's fine. She didn't pull off the bike or anything, but the gate arm's on the on the ground. And so they are very sensitive. They break <coughs> away pretty good as designed, and they mostly go back on very quickly. I can't imagine so many people going through that. They're, are they residents or guests? There's residents. Know? Because um, the guests have to come to a complete stop and they check their pass and then they open it up. I think a lot of the residents they want to kind of time that, you know, and get the, if you're going at like, you know, 3.5 miles an hour, you don't have to stop or something and they, you know, it's not, <coughs> and then they mis <coughs> mistime it and then they hit it. <coughs> they did fix it yesterday afternoon, Director. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that. that. was my question. Do they get a ticket for doing that, or is it an expense to, to the residents? We, we, I don't, I'm not aware that we've charged anybody for that. Um, I think um, mostly they just go back on. Right. And so. All right. I, I'd like to bring us back on agenda, please. If you have more questions on that, you can talk to Mr. Hudson after the meeting. We go now. Wow. Go ahead, let him make a motion. All right, wait, wait, this really isn't uh, an item that we make a motion on. Let's hear your motion. Okay, there's a request that I should make a motion if uh, 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 what I intend to talk. Uh, there is, um, uh, in our management agreement, there is a, a statement that uh, uh, the board should re receive uh, at least monthly, or as demanded, a, a member request report. Uh, it doesn't say the detail or summary. We can always negotiate that. So my motion is to ask uh, VMS to follow the management agreement providing a such a report. I would just like to speak to that. Number one, that's a contract issue with the agreement. We are looking at that in our closed session today. And I don't think it's appropriate that we do it here. It's been almost three years. It's almost three years that we had that. We do uh, in it our every. Statement. We update it every year. We, we haven't received anything three years. Okay. All right. Is there a second to his motion? All right. It dies without a second. All right. Let's go on to <clears throat> item eleven, the consent calendar. Now, I remind everybody that uh, all matters listed under the consent calendar are recommended for action by committees and will be enacted by the board in one motion. <clears throat> in the event there's an item that's removed from the consent calendar by a member of the board, such item will then be subject to further discussion. We have three areas on our consent calendar. We have... <clears throat> uh, the alterations, we have two approvals of, of variances and alterations. Landscape Committee has uh, a number of tree removals and our packet does give definite, in-depth information on every one of those. Uh, and then the third part is the Finance Committee and that is liens against members who are delinquent in their assessments and <clears throat> uh, file the small claims court for those that are delinquent in other monetary fees, fines, or something that uh, they need to do. Um, they have a motion to approve the consent calendar. I so move. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Pat, what'd you say? I'll second it. All right. Janie and Pat. All those in favor? Uh, let's vote. 
not working. We turned that off on the agenda. Just wanted to remind everyone that we're removing C1. Yes, right. That was in the agenda. Right. And took that off. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And Manuel, it's yours. A yes or no vote. I held my arm up for about <laughs> a minute. Yes. Yes. My machine doesn't work. Okay. Gary Morrison, yes or no? I'm a yes. Reza, yes or no? Director Pistani, is your vote a yes or no? No. And Director Rendazzo. Rendazzo. OK. Thank you. Mind get on there? Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. The consent okay. calendar <coughs> is approved. Now we go down to item 12, which is unfinished business. And to remind everybody, unfinished business are things that were brought up at a previous meeting and have been delayed for the 30-day notification to comply with Civil Code 4360. The first one is <clears throat> um, A, if you would read it, please, Madam Secretary. Thank you. And I would like to note the time for this. What time is it? 11.16. Is that what I see? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we are on our business at 11.16. Thank you. Attach Resolution 0118XX. Revise alteration standard 11 doors exterior. Whereas the Architectural Control and Standards Committee recognizes the need to amend alteration standards and create new alteration standards as necessary, and whereas the Architectural Control and Standards Committee recognizes the need to revise alteration standard 11 doors exterior, now therefore be it resolved August 14, 2018 that the Board of Directors of this corporation Hereby adopts revisions to alteration standard 11 doors exterior attached as part of the official minutes. Resolve further that resolution 01-10-269 adopted December 14, 2010 is hereby superseded and canceled and resolved further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution as written. I move this resolution. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Pat. OK, any comments? All right, let's vote on the approval of this resolution for revisions to architectural standard 11 on doors. I can't get it again. And Director Pistani? Missing one. All right, the motion passes <clears throat> nine yes, one no, and one abstaining. B, would you read the resolution, please, Madam Secretary? Revise alteration standard 13 lifts. The Architectural Controls and Standards Committee recognizes the needs to amend alteration standards and create new alteration standards as necessary, whereas the Architectural Standards and Controls Committee recognize the need to revise alteration standard 13 lifts and lifts policy. 
Whereas resolution U0196 established the precedent of using a single source for acquisition and installation of lifts on behalf of members, whereas resolution 00077 and 0122 established policies for verifying the authenticity of the disability of the requester and the notification of adjacent neighbors. Now, therefore, be it resolved July 10, 2018, that the board, August, whatever it is, <laughs> Seven. <laughs> that the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby adopts the following revisions to the alteration standard 13 lifts and lift policy attached as part of the official minutes of the meeting. Resolved further, single source procurement shall be permitted in the acquisition and installation of mechanical lifts. Resolved further that resolution 0196 0077 and U0122 are hereby superseded and canceled. Resolved further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution as written. I move this resolution. Do I have a second? I second. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Director Akrakar seconded it. Is there any discussion? If not, would you vote, please? Vote passes unanimously. All right, now we go to 12C. If you will read that resolution, please. Resolution, revise alteration standard 14 exhaust fan and vent installations. Whereas the Architectural Control and Standards Committee recognizes the need to amend alteration standards and create new alteration standards as necessary, and whereas the Architectural Controls and Standards Committee recognizes the need to revise alteration standard 14, exhaust fan and vent installations, now therefore be it resolved August 14, 2018, that the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby adopts revisions to alteration standard 14, exhaust fan vent installations attached as part of the official mean minutes of this meeting. Resolved further that resolution 0103153 adopted November 2003 is hereby superseded and canceled. And resolved further that the officers and agents of the corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution as written. I move this resolution. Do I have a second? Tom, thank you. All right, it's been moved and seconded that we adopt a resolution for revision to United Architectural Standard 14 on exhaust fans. If everybody will please vote. And Director Armendariz, is here's a yes or no? Okay. All right, the vote passes 10 to 0. And we go to <clears throat> unfinished business item 12D. I'll entertain a motion to adopt a resolution for the unauthorized alteration fee. Would you read the resolution, please? No. Whereas the mutual has seen an increase in unauthorized alterations, and whereas significant staff time is necessary to investigate, document, and process unauthorized alteration incidents. Now, therefore, be it resolved August 14, 2018, that the Board of Directors hereby adopts the unauthorized alteration fee. Resolved further effective September 1, 2018, the administrative fee for processing mutual consents after the fact will be $300. 
Resolved further, the fees shall be in addition to board approved mutual consent processing fees. Resolved further, payment of the unauthorized alteration fee does not preclude the member from disciplinary action by the board. Resolved further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out the purpose of this resolution. I move this resolution. Janie, you wanted to second that? All right, it's been <clears throat> moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yes, uh, Director English. Yes, I think $300 is rather excessive. And I wonder if perhaps we've done a study on the actual cost, got some costs from Betty, because 300 sounds like a lot of money to me for that. Thank you. Yes, we have. Director Durrell, you're chairman of that committee. Would you like to speak to that? We have approximately, staff has said, five hours of staff time. Therefore, it equated out to about $300. That's how that fee came up. They had done a lot of research and time spent on this. Thank you. Any other call? Okay, let's vote. We are voting on a motion to adopt a resolution for unauthorized alteration fee. <clears throat> All right, the motion passes eight to two with one abstention. All right, now we go to item 13 on our agenda, which is new business. These are things that are brought to the board for the first time. It is the first reading. We will not vote on uh, whether or not to adopt this. All we are voting on now is to put it on our future, our, our next agenda for September. So the first one is a motion to approve the Village Energy Task Force and Charter. Uh, that does not require a 30-day uh, notification. So that's something that we can vote yes or no right now. Uh, <clears throat> do I have a motion to approve the Village Energy Task Force? I so move. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, I'm going to let Carl do it because he's in charge of that. <laughs> All right, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the Village Energy Task Force and Charter. Discussion? Uh, yes. Yeah, Director I'm concerned Pat. that other um, boards like Third or uh, GRF will have too much influence uh, in this and, and it will be persuading our uh, group our directors to vote in favor of whatever they say without us giving a really good uh, analysis of it. Right. Well, at number one, I think you need to trust the members. It is a task force that is equally represented by all of the boards. There is no uh, top heavy or more than one. And secondly, anything that is done by the energy task force that affects United comes back to United mm -hmm. to be voted on. Uh, you had a comment, Director Armendariz? Yes, I think uh, Pat brings up a good point. However, however, I'm not concerned about it because uh, what this will do is they'll work together. Mm -hmm. And we'll get some efficiencies, I believe, by having just one consultant providing the services to all the mutuals. So that's a good point, but I don't think we really should be uh, concerned about that. Thank you. Okay, um, Director Akrakar. I'm kind of wondering. Uh, I'm kind of wondering. Uh, do we need to include uh, the towers in this because they are part of the? The towers is included. I'm sorry if I did. Misspoke. It's, it's not mentioned. It's not in there, yes, but we have a member on the Energy Task Force uh, from the Towers. We, they have been invited on more than one right. occasion. In fact, they were invited to our last meeting and they chose not to attend. Right. So at this particular point in time, the invitation has been extended to them, okay, but at this particular point in time, we haven't gotten any attendance. And it's they, not like we're sort of like ignoring them. We are opening the door and, and, and indicated with regard to what I mentioned before, this task force is made up of two directors from each of the mutuals, okay? 
and nothing, all we do is plan it and advise the various MNC committees, and then those MNC committees then advise the boards. So everything is on the up and up. It's just an advisory committee at this particular point in time. Oh, excuse me, advisory task force. Task force, yes. All right. Any other comments or questions? Yes, Director Torn. Uh, this is something that we really need to focus on, and the energy task force is a really good one that we can, uh, for the future of this community. However, I'm looking at uh, the mission, charter and mission, uh, and I understand the uh, 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 Director English's concern about uh, 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 what we need to do. Uh, and the question, uh, I, I hear that uh, our chair has responded uh, that we need to trust our staff. I totally agree with that, we need to trust our staff. However, as a senior manager, we trust our people. We always trust our people, no doubt about it. We trust our people, so that's not an issue. The issue is to verify. It's common in the senior management in the political environment to make the, uh, to understand the information, uh, the, the statement of trust, but verify. Uh, it's not just uh, uh, people are, you intend to do something, but sometimes people go off the tangent and do something that's unexpected and distracted from the uh, primary goal. So trust verify is very important practice in any kind of management. And as a board director, we need to really understand that we need to verify. So one thing we need to verify is the return. I don't hear the returns on this one. Uh, so the village task force will uh, trust, we will, uh, will make suggestion, but who will verify if they're suggesting? The board will verify. The board. They do not make any decisions. Anything that is done goes back to the board that it affects and the, the board approves it. Okay, very good in that, that case. Then uh, who's providing the return on investment projection for the board to verify? Is there another committee that's doing that work? And is there another committee that verifies that return on investment is indeed achieved? Uh, I have a request to speak. Director R. Uh, <coughs> Rendell, so would you like to speak to that? He is one of the members on that task force. Being one of the members on that task force, we, I don't know what it is that I said before that you didn't understand. We in an advisory task force. We advise, we gather all the information from the various different sources. We're going to invite people in from SCE and from various other agencies. We have with the $50,000 that we were granted based on the board approving this $50,000 the last time, we are going to be hiring an electrical consultant to provide for three items that we also voted on uh, at the last closed session. And as a result of that, they're going to work on those particular items. At the end of the day, this energy task force is looking at the energy infrastructure for this whole village. It affects the infrastructure with regard to SCE and the cables. It affects any EV, electric vehicle work that we need to do in the future. Upgrades in various different areas. There's a whole list of things that we're looking at. So at this particular point in time, I don't understand what you're talking about with regard to the fact, is there any, anybody checking and balancing this? The checks and balances comes from the, the advisory committee getting the information, making a decision that seems reasonable, going back to the MNC committee. The MNC committee then has our friends in the VMS, okay, do some studies or whatever it needs to be done. And then when we make a final decision on whatever it is that we decide needs to get done, we bring it back to the board for them to vote on. At this particular point in time, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not understanding why you're specifically having a trust issue right now with this. I, I might just correct one little thing, <clears throat> Director Randaza. It is a energy consultant, energy. not electrical Excuse consultant. Me. It's overall energy. So <laughs> may, may I clarify the issues here? No, you've had no. your time. Director Barwell? There, there are false uh, information yes. there. Yes. Uh, I think number one is important. I think number three, which states sustainability installation cost, return on investment, and so on, proposed priorities of actions, 
and so on. These are consultants. This is exactly what they're doing. They're doing it to be sure that we are efficient and that we are saving as much money as possible. That is the whole purpose of this. If we weren't interested in saving money, we wouldn't bother to do this. So to require an additional committee to review this is not, I think, very efficient or very wise. It's doing double timing this committee. Look at the 10 priorities here. <coughs> I think your concern is covered. Thank you. I call for the question. All right, let's uh, let's vote. We are voting on a motion to no, approve no. the Village Energy no Task vote. Force and Charter. Question. I call uh, for the question. All right, I don't see that you asked to speak. Yeah, but I, I pushed this to speak. Oh, no, that's your microphone. <laughs> that's your microphone. I'm sorry. Oh. All right. Uh, uh, well, Director Balsami, well, the Janie, Janie called for the, 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 the motion. That cuts off all debate. With a two-thirds vote. With a two-thirds vote. I, would you please vote on calling the question? Shall we vote? This is not on the... Uh, motion to approve the task no, force is probably just, just to just do it by hand. Cut debate and go to the question. What is voting for? Is voting for a question or is this? No, this is voting to call the question. We right. need a two thirds vote to stop debate and vote on the question. So the yes is a vote to stop, no is Yes, a that would be correct. Uh, uh, do, we, do we need to do this mechanically? No, we don't have that. It would be better if you raise your hands. All right, all of those in favor of calling the question, please raise your hand. Stop. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Excuse me, I don't know how to vote on this. I want to hear what he has to say. So. Then you should vote no. Did you get that count? Well, can we get the no votes? All right, yes. All those inviting, those who are voting no on calling the question. All right. Okay, we continue the debate. All right, <clears throat> Director Passami, you had a question, you had a comment? Yeah, <clears throat> my question was, uh, those who are going to be in this task force from United uh, need to have background on this issue of energy. Now, I know you don't, but you have got one uh, position there. Call, okay. He's an engineer, he's been in energy industry, so he's okay. But uh, if you come in and you take one other spot, I mean, we're gonna have consultant, electrical consultant, and we have to make a judgment. How can you make a judgment if you don't know what they're talking about? I'm not gonna answer, no. Uh, is there any other discussion before we go to the vote? Director English. Uh, yes, uh, my concern is the differences between United and Third. We have some very significant differences. Mm -hmm. And if we work together on solar, for example, we have some really major challenges uh, to come up with something that's good for both Third and United. In fact, in my opinion, I don't think we could come up with something like that. So this is my concern with this particular task force. Thank you. Each one was asked to do their priorities. They are sometimes different, sometimes the same. The energy consultant will be working for each of the individual boards. Uh, um, recommendations or concerns. We're just looking as a task force for uh, a united front on energy. And there are some things that are the whole village and there are other things that are individual to a particular mutual and that's what they will do. Each of us put in $50,000.
and that $50,000 will only be spent on what is for our mutual if it's done. Director Armendariz. Um, I hadn't thought of this point until Riza just brought it up, but uh, if there was a task force that uh, was doing something to do with accounting, for example, and I'm a retired CPA, I would think you would pick people that have a background in that specialty or that profession. So I'd never thought of this before, but who are the members representing United, and do they have an electrical engineering background like RISA has? Because that's a very good question. If you want to get good results, I think you should have people on the committee that have that expertise. So he's brought up a good question. Thank you. Okay. All right, we're going to vote now on the original motion to approve the Village Energy Task Force and Charter. All of those in favor, please indicate by voting yes. Those in <clears throat> not in favor, vote no. All right, the vote passes seven to three with one abstention. All right, uh, 13B, <clears throat> entertain a motion to approve a resolution for the 2019 collection and lien enforcement policy. <clears throat> this, again, is not one that requires a 30-day uh, notice, and so we will vote specifically on that. You have a copy of that. Would you please read the resolution, Madam Secretary? Thank you. 2019 Collection and Lien Enforcement Policy. Whereas, in accordance with California Civil Code, United Laguna Woods Mutual maintains a collection and lien enforcement policy that outlines the procedures, policies, and practices employed by the mutual in enforcing lien rights or other legal remedies for default in payment of assessments. And whereas legal counsel has reviewed the existing collection and lien enforcement policy and determined that the policy as written complies with civil code requirements and reflects current practices for collection of mutual de delinquencies. Now therefore be it resolved, August 14, 2018, that the Board of Directors hereby adopts the 2019 United Laguna Woods Mutual Collection and Lien Enforcement Policy as attached to the official minutes of this meeting and resolve further the policy statement is provided pursuant to the requirements of California Civil Code Section 5310A7 and will be distributed to members in the November in November 2018 as part of the annual policy statement. Resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this re resolution. I move this resolution. Is there a second? All right. <clears throat> Director English seconds it. Is there any discussion on this? I just might make the comment that nothing has changed in this policy except the date. Okay. Did you have a comment, Director Eckerkar? Yes. Uh, page 7 of uh, 13B, second paragraph. Uh, hold on. Uh, page, on third, page 5 of 9. Page 5 of 9, 13B. First uh, paragraph, about three lines up, it says, the parcel number of the property in which the shareholder has a leasehold interest. These property numbers are not clearly defined for uh, our cooperatives. And so this doesn't really make sense. Because if you put a property uh, parcel number, it refers to uh, many other properties that are in that. Okay. Also on the next uh, page seven of nine, I have a comment on item 19. Uh, here, he's saying $100 or if higher than three times the amount of the check, check up of $1,500. I'm kind of wondering if that is legal. If it's it is pursuant legal to civil code. Okay, and, <clears throat> and third one I have uh, on page eight of nine, item 23, Overnight payment, the address should be GRF, shouldn't it? 
No. Should, shouldn't it be GRF? Because <coughs> all the payments on liens are made to GRF. No. United, it goes to there. We have a, a joint, not going to say bank account, but uh, uh, um, service. Phone. where things go. But it goes in every name of the different ones. They all collect it together and then uh, take it out to the uh, various mutuals or GRF. But <clears throat> the checks can be made out to GRF. The check can be made out to United. The only thing I would suggest is the check not be made out to third. Well, my question is, will it go in the right bin? Yes, of course it will. Yes. All right. Any other comments? All right, let's, the, <clears throat> I think you've already started voting. All right, the motion <clears throat> passes nine to zero to two abstentions. 13C, entertain a motion to approve supplemental appropriation funding for earthquake insurance. Uh, again, that does not require a 30-day postponement. We decided a year ago to add earthquake insurance to our insurance, but it was after the 2018 budget had been approved. Therefore, we need a supplemental amount uh, funding for the earthquake insurance uh, because it will be in the 2019 budget, but it was not in the 2018 budget. So may I have a <clears throat> motion to approve the supplemental appropriation funding? Uh -huh. Resolution 0118XX, Supplemental Appropriation Funding for Earthquake Insurance, whereas Resolution 0117-153 approved earthquake insurance and directed staff to bind coverage for a policy period of December 15th of 2017 to December 15th, 2018 as an unabridged operating expenditure and whereas on July 31st, 2018, the Finance Committee endorsed staff recommendation to offset unbudgeted operating costs with a supplemental appropriation. Now, therefore, be it resolved on August 14th, 2018, the United Board of Directors authorizes a supplemental appropriation in the amount of $135,000 from the contingency fund to fund unbudgeted <coughs> operating expenses associated with earthquake insurance program premiums in the current year. And resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. I move this resolution. Okay, do I have a second? <coughs> are you seconding it? Yes. D Director English, okay. All right, is there any <coughs> discussion? Uh, Director Akrakar. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in the case of a real earthquake, we're talking about getting $10 million coverage and putting 5% deductible, which is half a million dollars, and our 135,000 premium. So we are really talking pittance because if there's a major, that doesn't even represent one or two or three building collapsing. So are we really doing any justice taking such a small <coughs> earthquake policy? Well, first of all, Director Akrakar, we are not voting or discussing doing the policy. It has already been gone through this board, yeah. been approved the way it was because there were mitigating circumstances on uh, property insurance, et cetera. I'd be glad to go back and look at those uh, figures for, with you. But all we are looking at today is funding it for 2018 since it was not in the 2018 budget. Right. All right, uh, <clears throat> Director Torn. Uh, I'm fully support this earthquake insurance, but I do have concern about uh, the amount of uh, insurance coverage here. And just like uh, 
Director uh, Cash has. Uh, however, um, this $135 is for, can we specifically state of what's the coverage in here in this resolution? Otherwise, people say $135,000 covers everything. We are safe. We are all covered. No, it's not. So it's only $10 million. If we have that number in here, that will more clearly state it. And in the future, if we have to modify it, it's more clearly stated what's wow. the coverage. Thank you. All right. I'll, I'll say again, as I did to Director Akrakar, we are not debating the terms of the earthquake insurance which was done last year and is in place. All we are <clears throat> looking at today is to pay the 135,000 from the contingency fund to fund it this year since it was not put in the budget. If you would like to go back and, and debate again, the uh, coverage, et cetera, that we, the ARTHI believe our insurance coverage has come up in September or October. Uh, if you want to talk about it before we renew it, but we're not renewing it. All we're doing is funding it for this year, which we have already done. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Rader. Dick Rader, 270D. As stated here, the insurance earthquake insurance policy with coverage of $10 million and a 5% deductible. I'm reading that out. Because as was pointed out, this is minimal coverage, especially if there was a major earthquake. I think it's important that we do have as much coverage as we can afford. But the point I wish to make to the community is that we are not providing complete earthquake coverage, and therefore you should consult your own insurance agent and see what additional uh, insurance you could provide for your own unit, especially for your possessions inside uh, your unit. Right. All right, see no more comments. Uh, would you please vote? All right, the motion passes 10 to 0 to 1. Abstention. All right, <clears throat> we will look at 13D. This is a motion that does require the 30 days, so all we are voting on is to put it on next month's agenda. And this is a motion to introduce the amended United Harassment, Nuisance, and Clutter Policies for review. Would you read the... <clears throat> motion, please. The resolution. Harassment policy. Now, there are three separate. I'm reading. Oh, there are three separate, so I should read right. all three. Oh. No. Okay. Well, I'll read. I'll read 13 the first. They are separated. Okay. Harassment policy. Whereas the governing documents review committee has recognized the need to adopt a harassment policy. A nuisance policy, clutter, and a clutter policy set forth guidelines for harassment, nuisance, and clutter received by the board. That the board of this director, August 14th, 2018, that the board of the directors of this corporation hereby adopts the harassment policy the nuisance policy, and the clutter. clutter policy as attached to the official minutes of this meeting and resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out the purpose of this resolution. I move this resolution. All right, may I have a second? <clears throat> Just a moment, please. I have a question, please. Yes, Director Armendariz. My copy here has three separate resolutions. Did you get a new copy? No, 
That's what she was reading, Combined each of the, up. the only one that's different is the clutter because it, the wording is exactly the same except that it, uh, uh, we're doing one of those right, yeah. supersedes, like yes, yeah. Now this is a resolution to bring these three resolutions to our next board meeting. All right, All right. Uh, would you vote please? Let's see. All right, uh, <clears throat> unanimously, this will be moved forward to our September meeting. Uh, 13E, a motion to introduce the resolution for revisions to the United Architectural Standard 15 floor coverings. And this does require 30 day <clears throat> postponement, so would you read that resolution, please? Revise alteration standard 15 floor coverings exterior. Whereas the Architectural Control and Standards Committee recognizes the need to amend alteration standards and create new alteration standards as necessary, and whereas the Architectural Controls and Standards Committee recognizes the need to revise alteration standard 15 floor coverings exterior. Now, therefore, be it resolved, August 14, 2018, that the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby introduces revisions to alteration standard 15 floor coverings exterior attached as part of the official minutes. Resolved that Resolution 010564, adopted June 2005, is hereby superseded and canceled. Resolved further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution as written. I move this resolution. All right. <clears throat> Would you like to second that, Janie? Yes. Yes. All right. It's been moved by Maggie and seconded by Janie that we move this to our September meeting. Is there any discussion? Yes, Pat. Uh, yes, I'd just like to have a, um, uh, i just like to understand why we've got the word exterior after hmm. everything. What are you talking about? Floor, floor coverings exterior. Everything we have another exterior. one on floors exterior. coverings okay. interior. It, it's patios and balconies, mainly balconies. Oh. The carpet has to be removable so it can be inspected for dry rot. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Director Blackwell, I, I suggest we add patio and balconies to the exterior dash patios and balconies. I'm adding it on the page. Exterior, right. I'm just adding it. Is it is the resolution 13E on page 3 of 9. In the second, whereas we will add patios and balconies to clarify what exterior means. Well, I put it right in the title. Okay. Would you please? Yes, Director Akrakar. If I look at the contents, attachment 2, mm -hmm. you're repeating the Well, it has that floor coverings exterior. No, 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 that's fine. But if you look at attachment two, we have already United Lebanon's mutual in the logo. And again, we have United Lebanon's mutual in the second line. Where would you like it removed, Cash? Just, just start I'm, the standard 15. Yeah, take this one line. We are, we are just clarifying this standard. We are not changing it to a different yeah. standard. Will, will that look 
better because all other standards have only one logo with the name. So just these two pages have that line twice. I don't know when he's talking. He's just saying that if you have a logo, you don't need to repeat the name. Anyway, he's saying. Okay, so I have no trouble with the name. All right, uh, if I can explain, Director Akrakar, <clears throat> what you have in uh, attachment two is the staff report. What you see where it's in bolded, United Laguna Woods Mutual, Standard 15, that's what's in the alterations manual. The alterations manual does not have the logo and that first thing on it. Okay. okay. I everybody. take my comment back. <laughs> Would people please vote on moving this to our September meeting? All right, we're still missing one vote, Madam Secretary. Can I get the manual vote, please? All right, would you raise your hand, please, to uh, move this resolution to our September board meeting? Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, so it's 10-0-1. All right, uh, F is to entertain a motion to introduce a resolution for revisions to the United Architectural Standard Number 16 on fences wrought iron. And again, I'd like to point out that uh, uh, we have a number of resolutions on different materials. This is just wrought iron fencing. It's, and it's a specific one. So uh, mm -hmm. do I have a, <clears throat> did you read that? <coughs> I do see sprinkler revisions on the back, too, so I wonder if maybe that should be included. It says, it, if we have applications three, all through three, we are talking about the fencing, and then in four, we're talking about sprinkler revisions. That's according. That's so uh, <coughs> it's just kind of added to it. Right. Well, it's part of the fencing. Because of the fencing, we have to consider where the sprinklers are. Yeah. Okay. I guess. I mean, we don't have a sprinkler <laughs> provision uh, because that is the landscape. Exactly. Yeah. But this is only as it regards to yeah, the right. broad iron okay. fencing. Okay. Okay. Revise alteration standard 16 fences wrought iron. Whereas the Architectural Controls and Standards Committee recognizes the need to amend alteration standards and create new alteration standards as necessary, and whereas the Architectural Control and Standards Committee recognizes the need to revise alteration standard 16, fences wrought iron, now therefore be it resolved <coughs> August 14, 2018, that the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby introduces revisions to alteration standard 16 fences wrought iron attached as part of the official minutes. Resolved further that resolution 0103170 1, adopted December 03 is hereby superseded and canceled and resolved further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution as written. I move this resolution. Do I have a second? All right, Janie. <coughs> it's been moved and seconded that we move this to our September meeting. Would you please vote? Director Durrell, can you give me your vote? 
I did. Uh, I'll do it again. All right. <clears throat> it's unanimous. And we'll be moved to our September agenda. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, now we go to <clears throat> agenda item 14 of committee reports. And first and foremost, we ask our treasurer for the uh, finance committee report financial. Of the, you, Revenue for United through June 30th, 2018 was $20,336,000 compared to expenses of $20,245,000, resulting in net revenue of $91,000. Slide two, please. Through June, United Mutual was better than budget by $350,000, primarily due to employee compensation and relate related due to vacant positions and maintenance, and staff is actively recruiting to fill these positions. Materials and supplies, favorable variance due to a different manufacturer of waste he uh, water heaters being used in the community more cost effectively. Building structure replacement, design work in progress for Castilla and La Corona structure repairs and also the quantity of reactive building repairs has decreased due to the aggressive prior to paint repair program. Landscape revitalization, scope of work is not yet determined. Pest control fumigation program started in May and will be completed by November. Slide three, please. Non-assessment revenues received to date 765,000 by category, starting with our largest revenue generating category of interest income, followed by fees and uh, charges to residents, laundry revenue, miscellaneous revenue, resale processing fee, lease processing fee, golf cart electrical fees, late fees for revenues and merchandise sales. Slide four, please. On this pie chart, we see expenses to date of 20,245,000 with our largest categories of expenses for compensation and property taxes followed by outside services, utilities, materials, insurance, and net allocations to mutuals and other. Slide five, please. The reserve balances on June the 30th, 2018 were 22,962,000. Year-to-date contributions and interest to reserves were 6136000 Our year-to-date expenditures were 5, 600, excuse me, 607000 uh, Our delinquency report as of July 2018, our current month we had, uh, we were down from 12 to 10 and went down slightly from 61,314 to 61,044. And this is very good. Chargeable services delinquency report also went down, they went down uh, 10,593 from 71,503 to 60,910. And that was a decrease in, in eight. Our resales, um, last year, we had resales of 286, and this year, 217. We're down 69 sales, or 24.1%. Our sales volume this year was 61,352,540. Last year was 71,759,109, which was down 10,406,569, or down 14.5%. Our average resale price this year uh, is 282.194, and last year 249.703, so it's up 32,491, or up 13%. Um, in our finance committee meeting, we uh, approved uh, to have one payment plan proposal and one account written off. 
Um, we discussed, and we will be discussing this further, uh, chargeable, chargeable services and, and what amount and how long that we will be writing those off. Uh, funding for waistline remediation, in order to cut the time for replacement from 12 years to six years, it's being worked into the 2019 budget. Moisture intrusion, United spent one and a half million last year for water intrusion cleanup. We cannot sustain this kind of expenditure. In addition, everyone I've talked to in United is in favor of taking care of this so as not to have their units flooded. And in the unit I live, we had half of our units in the last two weeks have had sewage backup. Um, the funding for supply line remediation is going to be addressed in 2019 as needed. And uh, this is going to be an expensive proposition of approximately $8,500 per unit or about, it's gonna be around $50 million, which we have not even gotten into that yet. Um, handyman program um, has already been addressed by Juanita. Electrical panel replacements, we, we need to, we're behind in inside and outside electrical panel replacements. Flood buzz, um, which are for the water heaters, sinks, and toilets, has been worked into the 2019 budget. And uh, so we'll be, or uh, they'll be deciding how they're going to be uh, putting these into the units. Um, we had discussed cost of living increase. Um, it was declined in our meeting in the Finance Committee. Um, I think this is the time to address something. I got um, remarks for the board meeting, the 2019 business plan. And um, I think it's interesting that uh, this came from a CPA who evidently doesn't understand budgets and uh, thinks that if we have a budget and we don't spend that whole budget, that, that the problem is gone. Um, actual expenditures he has for waistline remediation were less than budget by 135,000. My question would be, do you believe that because we did not spend all of the budgeted money that those problems have gone away? And I don't think so. And the budgeted items that are not addressed a lot of times are because we do not have the staff to take care of it. There are, are many reasons why we don't get them. We can't address everything that is in that budget. Um, also, um, it was mentioned on here that, um, uh, and this would be me, uh, that I followed third in that 3% annual cost of living increase. And um, I guess someone also is not, <laughs> not uh, following procedures in, in finding out what's really going on. And the three finance committee members, uh, G GRF, third and myself all meet once a month. We all agreed on this and we all were going to put it forward. So this was not something that third brought up and that I followed as is stated here. There are just a lot of inconsistencies in this report. Thank you. All right, uh, <clears throat> 14B is the uh, report of the Architectural Control and Standards Committee. I just want to say it's been such a privilege to be part of as a chair of an incredible committee that's formed last year and we have accomplished so many things to make our standards for any type of alteration so much easier for our members and also our contractors. I'm always open for people to come towards to me members and contractors with any issues, and then I take it to our staff 
managers, and we come up with resolutions, we change things to make our alterations so much easier and more pleasant than it has been in the past for uh, approval or for permits. I am so honored to have such an incredible board members on my committee along with my advisors. We have a structural engineer with a PhD. We have a geologist. We have a construction managers, electrical engineer, uh, const uh, just very, very qualified advisors. And I'm so proud to work with them. And also Kurt Weeman with his staff have been incredible to make our job easier as board members by standardizing everything and at the same time making it, as I stated, so much easier for our members and our contractors. And it's been a real privilege to be part of the beginning of all of that type of a committee. I also would like to say some of the things that we have accomplished is soffits. We're making it easier so people could have ceilings that are all the same height, even in the showers. We have bathroom splits that are standard now, window approvals that are standard, doors, um, just many, many, many standardized items that makes our job easier and also for, like I said, our members and our contractors. So I just wanted to kind of blow their horn. We couldn't do it without this whole committee that we do have, and along with the members that are on the committee. So I just want to say that Thursday at 9.30 is our next meeting, and that's in the Sycamore Room. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> the next report is from the Communications Committee, Director Blackwell. Thank you. Uh, since our last board meeting, we had six directors who contributed to the breeze. We had four responses to next door. Uh, two of us wrote about elections inviting candidates. That was Andre and myself. And it must have been what we did, Andre, because we got nine people. <laughs> All right. Then we had uh, one was about alterations, one was about compliance and nuisance, and one was about landscape and herbicides. Then in What's Up in the Village, which was last Friday, we released some information about the organic herbicide testing that will be going on. Um, thank you. So people are very active, and I expect some of your reports. My deadline is Friday noon. Thank you. All right, next uh, we have a report from the Executive Hearings Committee. We meet once a month. And uh, as I have mentioned before, we have different kinds of hearings. Uh, we have uh, damage reimbursement committee uh, uh, hearings, and we have disciplinary hearings. And this last time, we also had what we call record hearings. Uh, our bylaws state that any uh, member who has a balance greater than $100 and is more than 30 days delinquent on their assessment is not entitled to vote. And so we held hearings at that time of about 47 people were on that list. Uh, only a few showed up. And what we finished was there are six that were deceased and therefore their uh, assessments that are in arrears are basically being handled by estate planning or in some cases, legal action. Uh, we had 23 who were delinquent and will not be getting a ballot when it comes out this month. And we had 22 who were on the list, but because they were on the list and were noticed, they cured their balance and so they will receive a, a ballot this time. Next, we have the Governing Documents Committee. I had it marked, sorry. There we go. Governing Documents Committee met on Wednesday, July 25th. And the main things that we looked at were the 
three policies that we will be voting on next month on harassment, clutter, and I keep forgetting that third one. Nuisance. 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 Thank you. Again, th these are things that are just called out by name in our disciplinary process, and people have asked us for a more in-depth def definition of what is harassment, what is clutter, what is a nuisance. And so that's what we have tried to do, and we will vote on that next month. We... Uh, Those are those three things. Our next meeting is August 27th, 2018. And the main thing on our agenda for our August meeting is reviewing United Financial Requirements. Should we consider debt such as loans, college tuition, et cetera, when reviewing our financial requirements? Aging of accounts, not just a current bank statement, which is all that's required right now. Changing financial requirements for assets to 125 in net worth versus 125 additional assets. And should we uh, consider capital gains as income? Those are the three main things, or the main things that are on the future agenda for August 22nd. And that will be <coughs> at uh, 1.30 in the Sycamore Room. All right, our next report is from uh, Landscape Committee, Director Blackwell. Well, I basically gave my report earlier, but I'd just right. like to say it, just a couple more things. Uh, we did run a test in 2016. Um, let's see, we did, oh, 2015, we <coughs> limited pesticide usage in three cul-de-sacs as an experiment. We did it for three months. Uh, for a cul-de-sac, it takes eight hours of spraying without any spraying, which is what we did then. It required 54 hours of hand weeding. And that, that means with the whipmaster or whatever you call it. So that is eight versus 64 hours, 54 hours. Let's see. So this is what we need to know. So we will, the staff is also investigating ways that we can do, make adjustments to what we are doing if we are forced to use Roundup, which we don't want to use, but we will certainly hope that one of these five or maybe several of them will be useful in our community so we can cut Roundup down if we can't eliminate it entirely. Uh, nothing on the list that we are trying, unfortunately, works on Kakuya. And that's no surprise. Kakuya will soon take over the world. OK, the only thing that does kill Kakuya is Roundup. And that, that is the edging that we do around the trees and at the sidewalks. And Roundup is effectively making that dirt area wider, which is less pretty, but it is easier for that. But if we don't use Roundup, we'll have to see what happens because the Kakuya will notice. <laughs> so anyway, this this is just how much labor we need will be will be the factor. So we will make all efforts to come out with standards that maybe we can adjust or whatever we will do, whatever we can in United. We are aiming for decreasing and perhaps, if we can, eliminating the use, particularly of glyphosate. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> our next report is from the Maintenance and Construction Committee, Director Tibbetts. Okay, we didn't have a meeting in this past month, however, I will bring you up to date on a couple of things. As Juanita said earlier, she said our handyman program is really a big, big success. I've heard all the comments I have heard is extremely positive. Uh, my next door neighbor uses uh, handyman service and they've been out there a few times, I think five or six times, and 
she really says that these people are excellent workers, they're patient, and they know how to do anything. And so uh, that's good to hear. The service is $200 a year. Uh, you could spend that on one outside service call easily. So if you're interested in it, you can get a form next uh, across the hall here and sign up for it. Uh, next item, the Shepherd's Crook program uh, has been approved. And we are now working with the company. We're setting up the procedures, and hopefully it'll start by, by next month. And the areas they, they will start with are areas that were, uh, that were approved by security. And at this time, I would ask Director Carl Randazzle to give us a report on uh, his committee. <coughs> The, the, the energy committee. The energy task force, we had a lot of discourse here uh, today around the energy task force. We met on August 1st, and I just want to make mention the fact that anybody and everybody in the, in the village is invited to that task force meeting. Everything we discuss is basically as an advisory board, as we, as we, as we talked about. Uh, in fact, we had two people, two members, okay, come and wanted to discuss uh, uh, certain issues with regard to EV charging stations, okay, and we listened to what they had to say. Uh, at the meeting, we also reviewed the final version of the charter, which everybody uh, approved here today, and <clears throat> the uh, new charter calls for uh, two members each, two directors each from each of the boards, so two from United, two from Third, and, and two from GRF. No one has an upper hand. Uh, in fact, uh, the chair and the vice chair will not be voted on for this new task force until after the elections in October so that we get uh, all of the people that need to be on that board, okay, are going to be standing <coughs> for a while. So we felt it would be unfair to basically vote for the chair and the vice chair at this particular point in time <coughs> until we have uh, people that are actually going to be there for at least a year or two. So that's what we're doing uh, in, in the October time frame. Uh, then also at that meeting, VMS uh, okay, was told, was informed of our decision as to the three specific items that we want the consultant to be looking at first with the $50,000 that this board approved the last time we met. And uh, at this particular point in time, we're looking at it on a global basis, we're not drilling down to each particular item until we get the global issues resolved. And the global issues, uh, item one was review the current United Mutual Electric Infrastructure with an eye toward current five and ten year load capacity needs for electric panels, transformers, etc. because this infrastructure is aging and we need to find out what we need not only today but in the future. Uh, we're going to perform an analysis and the report of that findings of the electrical infrastructure review. And then we're supposed to, we're, we're, we're asking that uh, uh, consultant to prepare a strategic action plan for recommended electrical and, and power infrastructure upgrades, as well as any <coughs> EV charging stations, solar, and any other recommended upgrades that will make our systems more efficient and thus reduce our operating costs. Because the whole village has operating cost issues, obviously. The price of electricity is not going to get any cheaper. So some of these items, OK, we want to address uh, uh, mitigation of costs. The next meeting is scheduled for September 12th at 9.30 in the Willow Room. And anybody is invited. Also, we're looking for advisors on that task force, and if you have some expertise in electrical or what have you, come by and we can specifically talk about whether or not you could fit in as one of our advisors. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Carl. That's the end of our report. The next MNC meeting is August 22nd at 9 a.m. Thank you. And last but not least, Director Tibbetts will report from the resident advisory committee. Oh, yes, we had four... Uh, um, residents at our last meeting, uh, one was concerned about uh, illegal alteration that her neighbor was being done, <clears throat> so staff will be looking into that. 
then we also had a complaint about carport clutter. Uh, a gentleman uh, complained that the clutter in, next to him was spilling over into his, his carport, so staff is looking into that one. Uh, then we had a complaint about a golf cart using our electricity without a decal, so they were getting free electricity. And the last concern we had was from a lady who was experiencing an odor in her kitchen. They couldn't find out what it was. So staff went out there and checked it out and uh, after, our, after we complained about it and they found that uh, a vent wasn't hooked up correctly. So if those are, if you have concerns like that and you aren't getting satisfaction from our property services, Come to our meeting, we'll welcome you, that's all. Thank you. <clears throat> all right, now we'll look at uh, highlights from the GRF meetings. I know a lot of, uh, some of them did not meet, but at least maybe let us know what their next meeting date is. Finance Committee, Director Morrison. Uh, we did not <coughs> meet uh, this month. However, I'll give you some highlights from the previous meeting. We discussed the fee schedules for 2019, and however, <coughs> no action was taken. Um, we did supplemental uh, funding for gate renovations for gates 4, 10, 11, and 12 uh, for additional funding for renovations of those gate houses. Um, we also voted on supplemental funding for the community energy consultant of $50,000, which which we've discussed in detail today. And our next meeting is August the 22nd, 1.30, in the boardroom. And I also want to make one other comment here. Um, we have been having a lot of problems with flushing of diapers and wipes yes. down the toilets and causing a lot of cost of, for staff coming out and uh, having to rotor root and get these things pulled out. Um, we are discussing that if it can be proven that that blockage, or you can show that the blockage came from a certain re residence, you can be held in violation and charged for the cost of those calls. So I just want to say to everyone, Please place diapers and wipes in separate bags and throw them in the trash. Um, don't try to flush them down the toilets. Thank you. Okay. Our next report is from the Community Activities Committee, Director Durrell. The uh, GRF CAC meeting uh, for August didn't happen because we were not scheduled. So our next meeting is going to be September 13th at 1.30 in the boardroom, but I want all of you to just check the um, globe, uh, look for flyers. There's a lot of uh, good things going on out in our community and lots of fun during the summer. Thank you. <clears throat> Maintenance and Construction Committee for GRF, Director Tibbetts. <clears throat> the pickleball and paddleball court has been discussed uh, thoroughly. We have approved uh, the contract, now we're waiting for staff, uh, I mean, for the city approval. Once we get that done, then we'll, we'll uh, do our part. Uh, the, as Brad mentioned, the air conditioning unit has been approved after all these years uh, in the wood shop. That would be a terrific asset for them. And we had a long discussion about expanding the kitchen area in the Village Greens. Uh, I was on that original committee that set that up, as Mary, Mary knows, and uh, we had the, we approved the kitchen size we have now because at that time we did a survey of all the uh, people living here and they just wanted a smaller cafe type for breakfast and lunch. Then after it opened, they wanted dinner. So that's why, it, why it's, uh, they need an expansion. And we are discussing that. We will probably go for it and, and extend it. 
the other discussions are the continuing discussion on Clubhouse One uh, and the renovation of Performing Arts Center. And uh, next meeting is October 10th, 9.30. Thank you. <clears throat> Media Communication Committee, Director Blackwell. Thank you. Uh, we still have about over 6,000 digital subscribers. We have, our contracts are, are up for some things next year. And of course, one <coughs> contract has gone up and we are, we will not be able to negotiate with them yet for a while. Um, we are, uh, as far as communications to the residents, uh, Given the things that have been announced under what's up and so on this month, security is the great winner for hits. If security puts out a notice, everybody watches, everybody goes to it. And so security is the most popular one. Recreation events are pretty close. Uh, other things are very good, but uh, the breeze is also right up there with uh, um, 13,500 hits. So the breeze is up. Um, let's see, that's it. A new resident orientation is all still about between about 25 to 30 a month. And our nighttime ones seem <coughs> just as well attended as the daytime ones. So we'll see how that goes out. Uh, Docent tour is about the same, can be down a little. And that's it so far. We are the, the many, many uh, communication things that broadband and so on are still ongoing and ever, ever improving our system. So we're looking for better and better times. Thank you. Anything on the Thrive Project? Uh, no, Thrive did not meet last time. Last okay, month. all right. Uh, <coughs> Mobile and Vehicles Committee, Director Ackercar. Yeah, the committee met uh, on August 1st, and it was quite a scene because we had 100, the whole hall was full of people. <laughs> and we had to bring in more chairs, and uh, some of the people got here late, and they were complaining because their buses got here late, whatever. So the next meeting probably will be televised. We, and uh, the chairperson, Ms. Troutman, is looking into that right now. And we also are going to schedule a special meeting on August 31st at 9 o'clock to discuss some of the issues that were brought up and see what we can do. Uh, next, the staff, uh, basically the team, the people are asking to go back or revert to previous um, bus systems. They don't quite like the uh, new plan and ride system, but we are looking at looking bo doing both, and the staff estimate for eight route, seven day system, so that it will be like $1.64 per mile per month, and if we revert back to the old 11 route system, like before, it would be like $6.54 per mile per month. Um, also, there was a presentation by, of the new Ride Now software which demonstrated, and um, it's pretty nice. It uh, automates the bus service requests uh, quite efficiently, and they'll be notifying the customers so that people don't miss when they call for a bus and don't show up. Uh, committee charter was also uh, discussed and a resolution was passed so that the staff is clear of the duties and responsibilities. And alternative trans transportation options will be presented uh, on the October 3rd, the regular meeting. The regular, the regular meeting would be on October 3rd at 1.30 p.m. in the boardroom, while the August 31st meeting will be at 9 a.m. in the boardroom. So everybody's welcome, and most likely it might also be televised. I'm not sure of that. That's all I got for that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Security and Access Committee, Director Chivitz. 
As usual, uh, Chief Mori gave us an excellent report, very thorough, <clears throat> uh, discussed all of our security concerns. One of the biggest concerns, we have 128 illegal occupants, and many of these people are stopped, stopped in the evening, late evening or early morning, wandering through the carports. And so they, we question why they're doing there and their excuse, oh, I couldn't sleep, I have to walk. But and many times they'll have things that don't belong to them. So if uh, you, are, you, you see someone wandering around, call, call security. Uh, <clears throat> the number one traffic violation continues to be speeding. And the followed by uh, expired registration. That I don't understand why, why you'd have expired registration. Uh, but there are a lot of them out there. And we have a lot of residents also who don't have decals on their car. And uh, they were trying to get all of them on there, but, but they don't want, when they go out and park in the parking lot, they don't want people to know that that they're uh, from uh, our area because they think they can break into their cars and it's easy to do, but it isn't. Anyway, those are the main concerns. Uh, the next main uh, violation is not stopping a stop sign. That, uh, <clears throat> that was about the main part. The next meeting is August 27th at 1.30 1 p.m. in this room. Director Akrakar, do you have anything to add to the traffic hearings? Um, basically, you covered everything. Uh, all I can say is uh, our security is doing an excellent job keeping uh, information to the contractors and the contractor illegal parking incidences have come down quite a bit. And I, I may add, even though the speeding violations are quite a bit, the max speed we saw was like 39, which is high, shouldn't be that much. But tickets are issued from 31 to 35 most commonly, okay. which Thank is slightly you. over the speed limit. So that's all I have to report additional. Thank you. <clears throat> the uh, Disaster Preparedness Task Force, would you like to report on that, please, Director Akrakar? The well, Disaster Preparedness Task Force, we had the meeting on July 31. And I'm going to just give a brief summary. Uh, there's 20, uh, consists of 20 task force members and 12 guests were present. Uh, increase in the fires was reported by, in Southern California, which requires awareness from the residents. So we have a lot of fires, not just here, but in Southern California, that are caused by the cooktops. And uh, Chief Moy also mentioned about the fire avert device. Uh, which mutual representatives will check with their boards about encouraging, and I think we are almost there to accept it in the United. I'm not sure yet on that. Uh, <clears throat> the total budget for uh, the items for disaster preparedness would be around 15000 a year, which would be coming out of the security budget, uh, JRF security budget. Uh, Correspondent secretary brought in Breeze, add in the Breeze informing about the importance of checking and replacing their fire and smoke alarms. Uh, and we encourage people to, or residents, to put a five pound ABC fire extinguisher in their manors, <coughs> which is, will be easily accessible near the cooktops. Uh, recruitment and retention, we are like, GNC is trying to organize a barbecue on August 28th for recruiting uh, good neighbor captains. There was some confusion about good neighbor captains and the good neighbor building captains. And uh, I think we are all members and we kind of said we will keep it that way because all the paperwork will need to be changed. But we'll call ourselves, try to call ourselves as good neighbor captain rather than good neighbor building or block captains. Uh, 
third uh, fire our device is similarly mandatory third would like they would like to do it like their low toilet low flow toilet programs uh, also discussed for the first responders in case of disaster uh, there will be door hangers issued to the uh, good neighbor captains so that the early warning people first responders are made aware as to what uh, the condition is in that particular manner uh, and that little tab on the door, door hanger, will explain almost in detail what was going on, but in very brief summary. Again, I did mention about the barbecue on the August 28th. We are looking for more good neighbor captains, guys, so please volunteer your time, not just for yourself, but for your neighbors and for our community. Uh, and for the guy upstairs, will give you a lot of <laughs> golden points. So do that. Our Chief Moy will research yeah. Vile of Life. Uh, Chief Moy is also discussing, trying to research into Vile of Life, Vile of Life uh, <laughs> plague for the refrigerator. I don't know what that is about, but it looks like you can put your medical information in an envelope, red envelope, but mm -hmm. nothing has been finalized on that. So please, guys, join in the Good Neighbor Captain program. The next meeting will be September 25th at 9.30 a.m. in Cypress Room. <coughs> That's it. Thank you. Uh, we now go to agenda item 16, future agenda items. We have three ones that we moved forward from this one on 30 day, and that is the uh, Harassment, nuisance, and clutter policies for review. The resolution for uh, <clears throat> revisions to um, start standard 15 on floor coverings exterior. And the revisions to the standard 16 on wrought iron fences. Now we have two more that are added uh, that will be on our agenda in September. And one is a resolution to update the golf cart plug-in fee policy. And the other is an alteration on window covers. So colors, excuse me, not covers, colors. So if you're interested in any of those items, uh, if you need more information, please contact somebody on the board. Uh, contact, get the information off of our website because it's in detail there. And we hope to be able to see you there. So now we'll go to 17, which is <clears throat> director comments. And I'll start over here this time. <clears throat> director Armendariz. Thank you, Anita. That's a pleasant surprise. Um, I've just got two items I want to comment on. One was the one that Don Tibbetts brought up about the gate system. Um, I've not been a fan of the gate system from day one, but I came on uh, a resident too late to do anything about that. But uh, my last job was uh, the controller at Dana West Marina, down at Dana Point. And we had developed that marina for the County of Orange. And uh, they decided that uh, they wanted to put in a gate system. And we did, uh, because they insisted on it. We weren't in favor of it. And uh, when Don mentioned that one the gate had fallen off at one time. Now, I was surprised that it's only happened one time because once they put the gates on one through three, believe me, you're going to have traffic blockages occurring. You're going to have people running into the gates. You're going to have people, because we had that down there, so this shouldn't be any different. We don't have a very long lead-in except for gate two, luckily. I mean, gate three, because that's got the mortuary right there. But the other ones are very short. You have a lot of left turns coming into here from either Paseo de Valencia and that one. But uh, make a long story short, we had people that would try to squeeze in right after another car got in. Yeah. We had people, new people like a new resident will say, doesn't know the gate system even though he's got the little thing and he, you know, he just tries to barrel through. Anyway, we are going to have problems with this, so don't be surprised. Okay. The other comment I want to make about it is that uh, the people that seem to be in favor of it uh, don't understand these problems. Plus, they, th they think that it's going to solve the problems that we have dealing with uh, illegal guests or uh, unapproved, uh, let's say, tenants because they're roommates. 
And that's still going to continue because we need to figure a better way to uh, try to catch those violations. So the fact that we have a gauge system is not going to eliminate that. Okay. Um, so that's my remarks on that too, what Don brought up. The other uh, remarks I want to make uh, deal with what uh, Director Morrison brought up. Uh, I hadn't intended to get into the subject, but when he mentioned that uh, uh, this director, the CPA, I don't know what he has against CPAs, but he must have something. Uh, and his, I don't know his exact words, but he said something to the effect that uh, he doesn't seem to understand or know what he's talking about. And uh, whoever heard those remarks may not be aware of what happened. And at the last budget meeting that we had on the 2019 business plan, uh, Gary wasn't present there. So before the meeting, I gave him a handout of what I discussed. And I didn't expect him to bring it up now. So I want to clarify a few things. At that meeting, I had uh, stated that I was very impressed with the good job the staff had done in preparing the business plan. Gary continually at two or three different meetings would raise his concern about infrastructure. We all have the same concerns about infrastructure. It's going to be a problem probably for the next six, seven years. We got a 50 year old project here. But staff has assured us that with the budget planning that we're doing right now, they're on top of that. They've even given examples of how they're on top of it. And the only thing I brought up was that after I, they satisfied me on the budget amounts and the plans, then I looked at the fact that over the last two and a half years, we have collected over $5.8 million in assessments that were spent for the same type of budgeted items. And so I thought, what could be better than to present a business plan to all our residents out there that shows that our uh, staff has not only done a great job in planning to cure these things, but they've increased the amount budgeted for wasteland uh, remediation. Last year, it was $2 million. Uh, and, and this year, no, last year it was a million five. It was going to go up to $2 million. But because of people's concerns, it is now set at $2.3 million. That's an $800,000 increase. Mm -hmm. Landscaping, we've increased that by close to a million dollars. So when you think about just those two increases, they've had to do a lot of fine tuning to not increase it. And the only area where they increased it was for the reserves. They increased it by $5. And my only message there was, why increase it by $5? We've already, we already by through June 30th. Again, in this year, we have underspent some of those funds by over $800,000. So I thought, what could be better than to present the plan to our residents out there and give them all this information and say, we were able to do this because de staff is doing such a great job that we're able to do this without increasing your assessment. That's the only message I was trying to give. And my, my understanding right now is we're going to have a special meeting to go over all this again. And uh, you know, maybe I'll be able to convince people we don't need the, the effect on our reserves would be that we'd only have to reduce them, reduce them by $760,000. And we're not really reducing the reserves. We're just using money that's already been provided that hasn't been used. So that's my response to Gary's comments. Thank you. All right, I'd like to <clears throat> uh, remind directors that they really only have three minutes and right. uh, the corporate secretary had not put the timer on, but yeah. that's there. <clears throat> Director Akrakar. Uh, Madam Chair, I'll make it brief, but a couple of things. Andre made a very good comment on translation for some community people. I think he should take it back to the club and see if we get, someone can volunteer and be here at the, uh, res at the front desk to translate for people that have difficulty. Second, I have a, a statement that uh, Mr. Uh, Director Morrison made on clogged drains, drains with depends. The epoxy line drains can no longer be roto rooted and they will need a special high force something something treatment 
so that is going to be a very big issue if we are going to see the depends being not dependable anymore. Okay, thank you. All right, Director English. Other than the fact that I was very concerned about the Roundup issue, which I think we all need to be very concerned about, uh, I, I have no other comments. Thank you. Okay. Director Torn. Uh, I have a few comments here. Uh, first, about management agreement about uh, uh, residence requests, uh, summary report for us. I'm totally disappointed that uh, there's no second uh, for the, my, mo my motion, and uh, nobody seems to care about this one. This is in our contract. This is our due diligence. That's what we need to look into. We need to follow up on the vendors, which is the VMS, whether they do their job or not. And that's the most critical job and responsibility we have is to do due diligence. And I'm disappointed that people don't do that. Second thing is about ROI on the energy tax for us. Thank you very much, Carl, for clarifying us. And I understand what you're saying is that's not your job. That's you are just making recommendations. And you will have in your uh, charter, you will have say, we have the, uh, we do the projection, uh, ROI's return on investment. My question was who's doing that to verify? We have a solar energy project that's been over a year now, and nobody's telling us what is the return on investment. Are we really spending our money wisely? And also, uh, I'm, I have to apologize that I take every resident's assessment as my own money, and I want to find out whether our money is well spent or not. Uh, whether we, uh, uh, what we expected is return on us. That's my job, and I'm very serious on that. I'm always on the return on investment side. So please bear with us. Uh, if you think that uh, residents uh, need to know these numbers, let's work together and find out whether there's a re uh, re uh, return on investment, whether we got our money's worth back from the vendors. And as far as uh, uh, cash is uh, talk about interpretive, should be coming from the club. Yes, we recommended it several times. However, in order for this, uh, the whole process to work, we need interpreters, club members, uh, helping that, those issues to access our own information, to access the data, and to be permitted to post information on the website. So there are some uh, administration issues that we haven't got the response back from uh, uh, the VMS, and as a result, we cannot do those work without their permission. So. Uh, I'm glad that uh, Cash mentioned that. Maybe uh, from your Indian club, we can work together and find out how do we make it happen. It's something that we need to do in order to reduce both the VMS workload and make our residents happy. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Director Tibbetts. Yeah, there's a couple of seconds. I want to mention the Roundup has come up. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Has come up quite a bit today. Roundup. When it first came out years ago, it was really the most popular weed killer around because it not only kills the tops of the weeds, it kills the roots. And then the uh, weed doesn't come back up. And we use it here because it's cost effective. The, the gardener doesn't have to go back twice. So it's really, the well, question is, uh, how is it used? So if it's used properly, I think it'd be pretty safe. But it will be checked out, and I really thank all of the residents who are here and signed the petition. Thank you. <clears throat> Director Jarrell. I just wanted to say I think this year that our committees have done one incredible job. We work hard, spend a lot of time, do a lot of research, and uh, I am proud to be a member of the board and also serve on some of the committees, even if I'm not directly a committee member. Thank you. <clears throat> Director Blackwell. Uh, yes, uh, as to the gate system, uh, my past history was a criminal defense attorney. I know what people do in villages or in anywhere when they come into places where they should not be and where they do not have a financial investment. Uh, they are 
in fact, uncontrollable if we have no gates. The, the gate system as it is is great, but just with the persons at the gate, they couldn't, they couldn't even speak or wave to the people that were driving by while they were handling one person at a time. So it definitely needed to be automated. Uh, there's no place in the world that is considered secure that doesn't have an automated gate system of some kind. Uh, I, I don't think any of our residents actually would l prefer us to remove the gates. I think it's wonderful that there will be video of entries and entrance and there will be recording of things. That is, that is just basic, basic video that all businesses have, all parking lots have, all apartments and things inside LA have those things. Uh, we need safety around here, particularly since our residents are our age. We are defenseless when we run into thugs. Our, our property, our cars are parked blocks away in carports, totally unintended, totally unprotected all night long. We have no bars in any windows. We're lucky we have screens on the windows, but we have nothing to protect us from just a bang of a hammer and in they go, or just, just remove the screen, slide the window over, in they go. I cannot speak on this enough to say how this gate system is definitely needed. We need the maximum security possible for our people. As far as whether we need to hear a report monthly of all member comments, I don't know what we would do with that information anyway. I think uh, Brad and Siobhan give us reports on how they're doing and how they're responding and so on and how the tickets go. I think that is good. We do hear that regularly. Um, the English skills, it would be very good to have translators at the office. We do not want to give open access to all our documents to people and give them the responsibility of translating this to non-English speakers. If they are in the office, the person speaking to the translator can clarify. If, if there's a question, the translator can tell them. So it is best for persons to have their translator and there to be a live one there to handle the back and forth that would go on. Just to, to say, translate all our files into whatever. I don't think we want to do that. Um, it might be all right if we just, we, but those files are, have to be understood as well, and some things don't translate too clearly. I do think we need translators. I agree with that. Your time is up. Thank you. <laughs> Director Morrison. I have nothing further. I've probably said more than I should have already. Okay. <laughs> Director Bassin. <clears throat> I have a few comments. One, we have uh, said this before, I hope that uh, there would be a limit of the, on the speakers who are talking as well. Some speakers, when they get the microphone, they go on and on, like Brad, for example, and Maggie. <laughs> but the other thing that I want to say, I think procedures, although it's important, should not overshadow the, uh, the substance. A lot of time we I get stuck with procedures and we stop uh, people talking or making comments on the substance. So the substance get put uh, aside because it's overshadows. The other thing is, I have a question. Are statements of the new applicants going to be a I'm going to be uh, allowed for us to see before before this meeting that we have to uh, make our mind 
about who, what to do. The answer is no. We do not make up our mind on anything of the candidates. They are elected by our residents. The information that they have provided us is confidential until they decide it wants to be released. Mm -hmm. We are just uh, a conduit. We are the board, but we are not electing them or appointing them like we do our VMS directors where it comes from this board. This is strictly collecting information that goes out to the members and it goes out to everybody and everybody who turned in their candidate statement, uh, that information is on the ballot and will go out to every single member. But there is other confidential information on some of the information that they turned in, so those are not going to be available. And I might say now, because we have so many candidates, which is wonderful, the candidate forum on Friday will not take questions from the audience. There's just no way in the two hour time limit that we have that that can happen. So we have prepared questions that are being put forth and that's all that uh, we're going to have at that meeting. Uh, Director Randosa. <clears throat> yes, I, I'd like to say that uh, for, the, for, the perp for the audience's uh, edification, okay, this board meeting, these board meetings, and I'm new, basically I only started back in April, these board meetings are the culmination of what transpired over the previous month and over the previous time period. Each of the directors at each of these committees, maybe they're committee members, or maybe they're just going, attend the meeting, okay, they are informed at that point, and if they're not informed at that point, they get the minutes of the meeting put into their box. Then, Thursday before this meeting, a, I put it in a binder. This much information is provided to each director as a result of the information that's presented. I personally, and everybody else should have, we get asked to do that, go over this information over the weekend so that when we come to this meeting, we are thoroughly informed as to what's going on so that when people vote on these items, these items have been provided to them in this format. I was prepared to vote. And I'm not saying anybody else was, but with the votes that we had today, people in the audience may get the feeling like, you know, these people, you know, did not have the opportunity to say anything or do anything regarding it, okay? I had some questions over the weekend. I submitted my questions to Juanita to get some of those answers done prior to the meeting so that I would not disturb the meeting. If there are questions that really need the whole board to see, then maybe that's the time to put them forth. But this is the way I feel about it. And if anybody's going to go up for election for this position, be aware of the fact it's not only this three hours once a month. It's a whole almost job, okay, which I'm proud to do. I just want to let everybody know that for the purposes of everybody's edification. Thank you. Thank you. All right. This meeting is recessed, and I do apologize for the length of it, but I felt it was important at the beginning that we listen to all of the people on the roundup. Here we go.